Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Creative Arts Academy Arts Alive series, episode four. Today, we have two very special guests with us, Anita Ratna and Dipankar Mukherjee. Uh, Anita Di is joining us from Chennai, and Dipankar is joining us from Minneapolis, USA. I hope all of you are doing well. Uh, I would like to share first a little bit about the series. Art Alive series is an initiative to map the journey of the creators and the curators in times when mobility and gathering of people in a space has become subject to menace. So this project, we question the ways in which the arts community interacts with the indefinite new normal. Have we stopped? Have we paused? We definitely have. We've been reflecting, we've been negotiating, uh, but we haven't stopped for sure. We've been entertaining you, we've been bringing thought to the table throughout this difficult time. In fact, arts is something that most of the governments uh, termed as non-essential commodities. And yet it is arts that has helped us retain the sanity among humanity. We have artists restructuring, reinventing the ways and means of performing a performance, observing a performance, and even receiving the funds for the same, which has been a very uh, difficult area for all of us. It focuses, the series focuses on the impact on the community to observe and the pathways to recovery. How are we going to recover from it? This project envisions to create an archive providing technical, artistic, and strategic information for artists to sustain, grow, and witness history of change happening in real time. And today, as we come to the fourth episode. I would like to reflect that in the first episode, we had Padmashri Neelam Mansingh Chaudhary talking about her uh, Black Box, the new production that she did during these times. We had Bhai Baldeep Singh Ji, the music maestro and conservator who has completed more than 200 episodes of Yar Anad virtual battle series. Then I had uh, Mahesh Dattani joining us from Mumbai and Michael, Wall Michael Walling, uh, who joined us from UK. The reason we have conceived it as conversations is so that two artists can come and they can really reflect and talk to each other about what they have felt as a person or how they are engaging as an artist during this, these times. And the beautiful part is the combinations that are coming up are the people who have done collaborations in the past. And one of that combination is here in front of us. And I would like to take this moment to um, also introduce the two artists formally. Anita Ratnam, as we all know very dearly, um, I call her Anita D. And my first memory is meeting her in Chennai in this, um, very eclectically curated festival called the Little Festival. It was done in a museum, if I'm not wrong. And I had performed an unposted love letter directed by Neelam Man Singh Ji. And uh, Anita Di, as most of us know, is a performer and arts entrepreneur. She would like to call herself artspreneur in the areas of dance, theater, television, and the digital media. Her distinguished 50 years career has been awarded for innovation, creativity, and leadership in the USA, UK, and India. And as the founder and managing editor of the largest dance portal on the web, nartiki.com, Dr. Ratnam's voice and words on art, women's issues, mythology, and cultural policy continue to impact today's generation of creative workers. She also inspires us every day. If you've been watching her lives on Insta, on Facebook, and all the um, extremely innovative curations that she has done during this year. Dipankar, who's joined us, it's 8 a.m. for him in the morning in USA. He is the artistic director of uh, 
Pangaea World Theatre. In fact, we were having a discussion about Pangaea and Pangaea. Maybe he would share that with the audience during the session. Uh, he's a progressive space, uh, runs, I mean, this Pangaea World, Pangaea World Theatre is a progressive space for theatre and the arts. And the Pankar strives to disrupt Thank colonial, you. racist, and patriarchal modalities and searches for the alternate ways of working. He has received the Humphrey Institute Fellow, Fellowship to Salzburg and has been a Ford Foundation delegate to India and Lebanon. His theater recently celebrated 25 years. So many congratulations for that, Dipankar. Uh, and it is 25 years of theater that stands for justice, and intersectionality. He has over 30 years of experience directing in India, Canada, UK, and US. And these are brief bios of both these artists who've been working for more than 30 and more than 50 years. Uh, but Anita Di was insistent that we must keep it short so that we can immediately get down to the discussion and through that, discover the work that they have been doing for so many years. So over to you, Anita Di. And looking forward to hearing both of you, Dipankar, and a very warm welcome to this session. Thank you, Ramanjit. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I yeah. appreciate what Creative Arts Academy is doing. And thank you for this space to have this discussion. It is so rare that theater artists or dance artists uh, get a chance like this because film, like you walk into a shop, you have 200 magazines about film, uh, but for theater and and a topic like this, and I've seen the other work Creative Arts Academy has presented, and I so honor the space that you have crafted. I'm happy thank to hear that. Thank you so much, Ramanji. Thank you so much for trusting in what I do, uh, which seems sometimes so disparate and so uh, diverse, and for um, believing that uh, you know outliers like you and I have a very important place and a voice, especially during the pandemic. I want to welcome my absolutely dear friend, Dipankar. Dipankar, this is such a joy. I think oh, it's a great privilege as well to be able to have this conversation because we've known each other in a sense for 25 years or more because we both have come, have grown up in the same city, which is Chennai. So, oh. and Yes, Deepankar is from Chennai. He is <laughs> a Bengali yes. in Chennai, now in US. Okay. Yes. So, uh, and uh, we've had some amazing moments um, uh, in collaboration and in conversation. And all the time, Deepankar, I always remember one thing that you have always said whenever I go on stage. You would always say, go and tear it up. Go and <laughs> attack. You know, I mean, you would always say that. I mean, you said it to me when I was working with you, but you would always say that to all your actors, I think, like to just go out there and you've done all these weeks and hours of rehearsal, but you go out there and you tear it up with an intensity and a ferocity. And my God, both the collaborations you and I did had that amazing intensity and ferocity. But can we start from... Uh, from our town, Chennai, uh, we were both in, uh, although we are a decade apart or more, but we both were in our theater groups in college. And if I remember the Pankar, we only had white Western playwrights as material at that time. We didn't have Indian playwright source material. And thinking back, I'm saying, gosh, what a huge gap that was. Do you want to take it from there? Yes, and first of all, it's so, it's so, it warms my heart to engage with you, and we are live. Uh, thank you so much for uh, suggesting this uh, conversation. I'm so grateful, and I have so much of respect for who you are and the work that you have done, uh, impacting not just the dance field, but, but curatorial mindset and consciousness, uh, locally, nationally, and internationally, and... and and I know that you have created work in spite of. Uh, that's the way I, uh, if I have to phrase <laughs> Anita's uphill battle of, you know, making things happen is you have crafted in spite of, and it's an honor uh, to engage with you. Um, and yes, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the seed started, uh, of course, uh, 
at, at home, you know, my mother, we are Bengalis and, um, you know, yes, Chennai, I grew up in my formative years, uh, but every year, um, uh, Kolkata was a place for all my living and dead relatives. So everybody's marriage, anybody's uh, um, death, anybody's, uh, you know, any occasion we would literally go to Kolkata and um, that's where uh, the seed started. And then uh, Chennai, yeah, what you addressed is really, you know, the colonized mind, you know, you know because it's not that, it's not that the, our, our playwrights of vernacular were not there. They've been writing since second century BC. Uh, the, 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 the idea was what gets centrality, you know, uh, who, who promotes, who, who supports the theater, fest, in the college theater festivals, you know, is supported by, you know, uh, these uh, British Council, Max Muller, uh, Alliance France, Ma, uh, you know. Uh, USIS, United, United States, States Information, yes. USIS, and so those playwrights get done. And so it took me quite some time and much later when uh, when this color of skin came to in, uh, in, intercept the white flow in the States. That's when I realized, man, all these years, I mean, vernacular plays I've done, plays in Bangla, plays in Hindi, but they were not what we call, uh, you know, what got resources, you know, it was all I was sharing with you before, like Mardi Gras, you know, IIT festival, we, uh, we did, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, that's where most of the theater, uh, the muscle started, right? But it was a group play, 13 plays from all over India. Every playwright was dead, white, male playwrights. Yeah. And, and, and we respect their craft. You're not discussing demeaning the craft, but, but who will do? our playwrights our, you know and so that but that was what the water we were swimming in until till we uh, you know uh, uh, get rid of that thought that what gets and there is something getting centrality and why you know and and then then my whole life started then you know then Bagul Sharkar's work uh, Girish Kanan's work. I mean with it so many seagull publication from Kolkata was instrumental in 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 making these plays available. Uh, you know, Indian plays in English in uh, and of course vernacular always existed. But you're right. When we were when we were doing our formative learnings, it was all male, white, dead Western playwrights. And and now the word West is also a bit challenging, right? Because now the work that I do is from the West, but we have Latinx community, indigenous community, African-American community, South Asian community, you know? So yeah, that, that, yeah. that's unfortunately, it, needs, it takes time uh, to get rid of that condition. It, ta it takes a long time because I remember that, you know, I have so much respect for the fact that you work with, so the voices and the vision and the dreams and the words of so many people of color, let's put it that way, you know. Uh, of course, you also do Shakespeare. And for me, uh, when I lived in the United States and I was working in television, I was always this exotic Indian girl. I was also this exotic Indian girl on campus when I did theater in New Orleans. And so there's always this expectation of what skin or the place you come from, your, like your geography is your history, right? So you come from India, you have to be a certain way, you have to look a certain way, talk a certain way, behave a certain way. And I was just intent on exploding all those, you know, bubbles at every moment when I lived in America. But growing up in India, I didn't realize it until like you, I had to, I left and, and came to the West. And then I realized, you know, that the West was also ready to box us, to sort of, you know, exoticize us, right? Yeah. And, and so through, the, through my television program, because I did that for 10 years, and you, I remember when you were, um, uh, you were at the Guthri and you did, you did Nagamandala there, or you, you were part of the Nagamandala right. production. I want you to tell me about what it was to work in a city like Minneapolis, which is fabulous for the arts, but here you are, a person of color, working with uh, a play that is also from, which is not a dead white male playwright. Did you, uh, just what was that experience about, just briefly? 
Uh, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Anita. Uh, yeah, it's always, you know, the, you know, there are words in English or words uh, that we use, but only there are certain moments when then epiphany happens and it sits in your body. And as a dancer, I know I'm, I'm conscious I'm talking to a dancer. So you're all body, uh, you know, uh, uh, unless you internalize, you can't express. And, and yes. it is, uh, you know, the word negotiating or interrupting or intercepting. I realized when we started, we, you know, first it was, I used to live in the world called choice of literature. Like you, you choose the literature and you do it. But then when you are choosing for 45, 50 years, the history of a regional theater, uh, and it's important to name regional theater because those are resource theaters. You know, work mm -hmm. always goes on, work always goes on. What is resource is the conversation to have. So, so at that particular time, my mindset was different. It was all about climbing the ladder and the ladder was very vertical. It was mm -hmm. all about, you know, what I need to do to come to the next level, to the next level. My goal was by the time I'm 35, I should be an artistic director of a regional theater because that's the conditioning from kindergarten, right? You know, and, and I was doing that climb till I met some teachers and one of them was Dr. A.K. Ramanujan. When we did, when we Nagamangala, Dr. Ramanujan, he came into my lives, uh, life and he shifted it so powerfully. And he was from Chennai and, and Gilis and did a lot of his plays in, yes. uh, you know, their relationship was, was amazing, you know. And I was sitting in this room, it was a complete white ocean. And then because I was the only uh, Indian uh, uh, there, the uh, only person of color, me and the janitor were the only two people of color. <laughs> really, out of, uh, out of a staff capacity of 400 people, you know, we were the two people of color. One was a part time receptionist, the janitor, and me, um, you know, and, and then, but I was so lucky that in my small office, I had Dr. Ramanujan sitting oh. and Allah sitting. I said, you know, I just want this moment to just live forever. Yes. <laughs> I said, you know, and Dr. Ramanujan was uh, like, because it was through her, his three short plays, Girish uh, uh, yes. had uh, created the uh, script of Naganandla. And, and, and Dr. Ramanujan, I remember sitting with him and, and talking exactly about this. And, uh, uh, you know, Meena, um, uh, and we were saying that, you know, that we are conditioned to honor, every, I can sit with you and talk about Amer American uh, uh, drama, prose, poetry, British drama, prose, poetry, commonwealth, I don't understand the term, but, but if somebody asks me only now, after going back, learning Sanskrit, learning the Natya Shastra, learning Indian playwrights, learning Indian playwrights in vernacular, Indian play, that's when, so I was just telling him all this, he says, it doesn't matter, start today. You know, and culture is not something, and, and he has this soft-spoken, quiet man. He said, culture is not something that you can just own by being born into it. You have to work yeah. hard at it. You have to earn yes. it, you know, and that was very powerful for me at the time, you know, because you become very parochial, right? I'm not white. I'm all of Bengali and I'm all of Indian, right? But am I, what's my knowledge? What's the rigor of practice? How many work, how much work have I done? How, how, how long have I walked in the soil? How have I struggled with the people? You know, it's just because you belong, you speak a language, you can't own the culture. And that's what Dr. Ramanujan said that don't, you know, and, you know, and of course, Dr. Ramanujan, he was the head of the uh, uh, South Asian department in Chicago. He was a very well-known Chicago. Man. Yeah. Yes. And, but he would every day after rehearsal come and ask me, how are they really treating you? And I did not understand the power of that sentence because he has negotiated with his color of skin in the white world, right? So what he was saying, I said, is anything wrong with the rehearsal? <laughs> I thought he was talking about the work. And, but now I see he was seeing that yes, all this hoopla about celebrating India, Indian playwright and all, but are, how are they treating you, the human? 
and 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 then of course working with girish kanad like suppose there is a particular scene in which the, we feel the transition was a bit clunky he said okay and he'll take his typewriter he wanted a typewriter <laughs> so i got him a typewriter and he was sitting under the staircase and he would just churn out a brilliant piece of you know <laughs> transition moment right there and then in 10 minutes you know so it was really one of i needed these elders in my life at that moment in at that moment when you know i was really sort of climbing the ladder up and they shifted you know then the ladder came horizontal uh, for me consciously and then i started you know looking at who, how can the ladder still go up but with the community intersectional community so so dr ramanujam and i i because you know suddenly when you become a professional you know you uh, there are not many people to coach you and people who have your oh, yeah. well being in your heart so i was away from my parents i was away from my family i had no money you know and and but at that time dr ramanujam and girish kanad these were names i grew up with in india in my in my literature classes i read dr ramanujam's poetry and and so here they were and they were such guides for me so yes the play went well and you know minneapolis loves to stand up at the end of every play and clap you know all that happened but to me what what i remember was they just rooted me into what i was mm-hmm. without without uh, and fearless rooting there's no apology you know so that's what i learned from that moment and and that was my foray into the you know a, a, a western uh, regional theater where resources like you just have to mention i've directed well directing macbeth uh, or, or hamlet i would just say wow this ham is just like a glorified hindi movie you know every 5 minutes there's a murder i mean what would it be if there is a wall uh you know and every time if the uh, you know a, 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 the the wall gets bloody and wall and blood just flows instead of showing murder after murder and and it's so uh, artificial right you know all these big burly men are coming on stage we have a fight choreographer and they <laughs> come, yeah, and then metallic tin sword <laughs> you know so i was trying to metaphorize these murders with a three after every page there's a murder and next day we have a uh, they they really had this whole wall where there is blood flowing i said what this is, uh, who thought of this he said no yesterday you were saying so that's when i realized that the resources that goes towards white regional theaters and white work is not the money that goes behind so yes minneapolis i also used to believe that minneapolis is a powerful place where art hap- art is happening even dance companies from new york have many of them have moved yes. here because there is there is resources people can live off theater they don't have to do five jobs um you know uh, but there was this gross inequity and that's what we are trying to shift mm. you know dipankar i was just thinking when we were talking about ak ramanujan that uh, we we are tied like that because i remember i was supposed to meet him in chicago um with professor john erdman who was also a scholar of india and uh, especially of uday shankar but um uh, when i was in chicago and then we had set an a set an appointment and he was not well the week later he was gone yes so i i remember it was 1993 and when i came back to india one of my earliest works after leaving the us was adapting the the uh, poems of ak ramanujam's brilliant translations of sangam tamil poetry yes. so that now brings us to our first collaboration because meena natarajan your wife wrote a script based on the tamil sangam poems you know and she called it the inner world and there i was i think it was the year 1996 where maybe i was approached uh, and uh, we only had what faxes at that time dipankar did we have emails i don't even know when we had for i think we just had fax things going or maybe phone calls yes. and we certainly we certainly didn't didn't have cell phones yet to call right. each other as we do but i remember making the uh, on one of my trips to, to america at that time coming to minneapolis to do like what we, what you wanted like a quick photo shoot because you were in the early years of pangea you yes. two were living in a small apartment i remember we uh, i shared I, i probably threw you out of your room 
and um, my daughter was with me. Yeah. She was traveling everywhere with me, and we did this photo shoot, right? Yeah. Uh, with just some bits of material and unstitched cloth and drapes and things like that, which is I thought like so neat. And we were just look. I think you were casting, and it I, it was 1996. And um, can I show you something that reminds me? It reminds you of me every single day. We went to your city had the ubiquitous honor of having the biggest mall in America at that right. time. Maybe it still is. It was called Mall of Americas, right? Yeah. yeah. And my then 10 year old daughter went straight and picked this up. <laughs> <laughs> it was big, I, it was half her size for sure. And we named her Kelly Kong. This panda, we decided she's she's female. We named her Kelly Kong, and it took all of a full duffel bag to bring her back. Wow. And, and one of the things I remember so clearly, Dipankar, is that that was the trip in which my daughter took her first sip of wine. You know. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, but let's come back to the inner world. Right. I, I had never worked with uh, a director who thought in terms of scale. You know that, like like you did, because you're not just a director; you're also a scenographer. So there was this, and we were in this fabulous cave of a theater called Jean Lune. Oh my God, what what a space! Yes. And uh, everybody yes. was sitting up and the, the, so intimately in the floor. It was so exciting for me to you know work on this. You had you had fashioned it as. Uh, poems of Love and War, which is how A.K. Ramanujam had translated it, the inner world and the outer world, and uh, a love story between a warrior and, oh, and a young girl, and he goes off to war, and he's unfaithful, and she's hurt, and then, actually, I'll tell you something, I didn't want to take him back. <laughs> I didn't want to take him back, but the script said you need to have a happily ever after ending, okay? Mm -hmm. So, so can I just, um, can we just have uh, excerpts now of um, as, as some footage and then we'll come back and talk about it? Oh, that'd be uh, so great. We, I'm seeing this yeah. picture up the years. I love it. Yeah. Well, my dear, that was the year, time of VHS. And right. we, still have, we still haven't digitized it, but we have a, a little bit of excerpts. And of course, your, your fabulous set, which we will come back and talk about. So, Surya, can we have the uh, video of Inner World, please? They, they play in the, in the new water that it brings desire. I loved the two-faced thief. In the dead of night, she comes like the fragrance of the forest hills to be one with me. Then she sheds the petals of night's several flowers, does her hair again in new perfumes and oils, to be one with her family at dawn, in a stranger's different face. Only the thief was there, no one else. And if he should lie, what can I do? There was only the thin-legged heron with legs as yellow as millet stems. If men come to fight me, I will not be afraid. I will turn them back. But if your people come, I will hide, dark one. The bowman has a warrior's band on his ankle. The girl with the bracelet on her arm has anklets on her tender feet. They look like good people. Like drums after 
I came here quicker than the clouds thinking of you. I saw on my way peacocks that danced just like you. I saw jasmine buds blossom with the fragrance of your forehead. Thinking only of you, I have come back. Don't! Don't come down my street with your words, which sound like the screeching of a mother hen when she gathers her frightened chicks into a bunch, when they don't know where to go for safety, when she thinks that wild cats have come through the fences at night for Don't come down my street with your words. Pankaj, what do you think? Wow. Looking at <laughs> Listen, there's a, there's a question when, when, the, when the film, when the clip was showing and, uh, you know, the flooring was just the regular flooring. It was with lighting that, that you transformed it. It was a stone floor, right? You yeah, it, just had a regular stone floor. It we didn't pretty, put yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it was a regular only floor. Uh, uh, you know, and it is an old warehouse, uh, so it was nothing very soft and, uh, you know, uh, uh, so, uh, but I, you know, maybe it came from, you know, belonging to low <laughs> middle class family where uh, when you did not have money for set, you make it up with light. Yes. It, yeah. it, you know, was... and, and so I, I always work with, number one, I must name two names. The set designer was a, is a brilliant, he's an elder now, uh, um, uh, Setu Jones. Um, yes. Who was a visual, visual artist. Yes, Setu Jones, African American visual artist, and my Fabulous. lighting designer was Jeff Bartlett. Um, uh, and and these are just gobos on the floor. These are just you know uh, gobos uh, because we wanted to show the expanse because the whole poem was about nature, references to yes. nature. So I said that if you can, can we, uh, how do we create the forest feel and the expanse in this? I want this whole warehouse to become a forest. And he said that, well, number of lighting instruments you have, I tried to give you a small forest. I said, I want the big forest. <laughs> so, so it is just gobos, you know, and, and uh, uh, so we used to, and this was our, actually, I think this was our uh, second production of Pangea, you know, but so yes. glad that you, you have the documentation. Please, uh, please give it to us. I would love to keep it. And because that time we did not even have money to document our work. <laughs> Um, yeah. you know, so the flooring is really a, a pretty, uh, uh, the real flooring is just a concrete floor, but yeah. with the lighting of gobos, it became the green color forest and then highlighting each bodies of the actors. And these were actors, you know, Lou Fan from Vietnam uh, and from Canada, Barbara from uh, uh, Dublin, and then Shea Cage um, uh, from uh, African American here in Minneapolis. And then yeah. there was, we, yeah, so it was really, and you choreographed, I must mention that, Anita, you were the uh, choreographer. Of no, I remember the sticks, Dipankar. You wanted yeah. them to be really much more powerful. You know, yeah. you really wanted them to, yeah, and to get them to do that, you know, and yeah. lean. And, but it was, it was great fun because here I was working, it was still early for me, and I was working with non-dance non trained bodies. But, yeah. but great bodies, bodies, uh, you know, the, the African-American woman just had musicality oozing out of her. It was just there for her. And so did Lou Farm. I mean, he was able to do that so beautifully. But Dipankar, I have to say, the crowning moment was your moving bed. It was so beautiful. It was just pushed. It was, I mean, it, for me still, it's one of those stunning moments in, in set design because yeah. Uh, I don't think anybody had seen, I had not seen, and I'm sure many people in theater had not seen, you know, just 
the bed very slowly, almost lovingly, with so much sensuality, just being yeah. moved all around the Jeunlun stage. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 yeah, he, and not, yeah, you and uh, you and the brother who was absolutely <laughs> petrified of your energy. <laughs> but he, he was getting more and more frozen. I said, man, you are the warrior. We need you to be proactive. And, and then he was so overwhelmed by Anita Ratnam's choreography and gorgeousness. That, but, the, but the whole vision with the light and the moving, uh, moving yes. uh, in, uh, bed in which there were these lovers and, uh, and also the people who were moving, you know, they were not seeing, they were looking away to give you privacy. I mean, they all came to yeah. the right the richness yes. of Nina's script and, and actually, yeah, I, I was corrected that it was not because I remember I wanted to work with a woman lighting designer. So it was uh, Sarah Schreiber, who was, we were students together and assistants together during our assisting days. And Sarah Schreiber, do you remember Anita? She, she lit, she, she lit and, and, she, and she said, this is a woman's story written by a woman with a protagonist as a woman. Leave, leave the lighting to me. So yes. every time I would go to her to give her a note. She said, it's a woman's story. I said, okay, well, can a woman's story have a little bit more highlighting on the woman's face? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, the lighting designer was brilliant. Um, and, and I so, remember... Yeah. Anita, I've never worked with a regular set designer. I've always worked with visual artists or sculptors as set designers because they choreograph the space. They give uh, the space and what you did, what you did with your choreography, you use different levels. Do you remember way up there about almost like uh, 80 feet oh, up? Yeah. There yeah, yeah, you yes. had <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Was, it, was, it was magical. And um, you know the, the the woman who sang Nirmala Rajeshekar has now become a big star. She was yeah. she was also very new then, right? She was right. also so. I was. It was so nice that you used the Carnatic strain because it was the the original was in beautiful old Tamil, which right. had a kind of a haiku kind of a sensibility, and it was and Meena had done such a beautiful job of creating. And a story kind of narrative, you know, with yeah. the, with these beautiful poems, which were gifted to us for our generation by A.K. Ramanujam's absolutely, you know, incandescent translations. So absolutely. I have to say that it was just it was a fabulous moment, and I we I can't move on to the next uh, topic, the Pangar, which is going to be about you and your work in Pangaea since in a world which has been so much uh, without talking about you know that fierce commitment that you have you bring to every rehearsal and that kind of commitment that my mother and my father instilled in me when i decided that i was not going to be part of the family business narrative selling automobile parts or i was not going to be uh, into the regular marriage narrative you know, uh, I had I was already the, the mother of two children, but my parents were like saying, "You have a gift. Not everybody has it. Don't worry. The kids are here. We'll take care. Just go and do your thing." So it was that kind of uh, you know that both with a focus, um, a ferocity of saying, "You you will have to do it. We we can support you, but you have to take the big bats. You have to put that foot on the stage, and you have to be your best." And um, it was just what five or six days before the premiere that I had a huge tragedy in my family mm -hmm. and I was so torn but I remember my mother's voice and said you know um, your father would have wanted you to honor the commitment you do not have to come back uh, because your father and I would want you to honor the commitment of a public you know promise yeah. Uh, so it was at the most difficult five days of my life, literally, you know, yeah. um, you know, being Indian, you know, you lose yeah. a parent, you have to go back and especially being a woman, woman's duty, daughter's duty, all those, all those voices are coming. Yeah. And yet I come back to India and my mother turns around and just puts me back on the flight. Yeah. She says, you're going right back. But I remember landing on the, on opening night or your soft opening night, feeling yeah. like a zombie. And the, your ensemble, the ensemble really held me. 
I mean, they yeah. knew my words, they knew my exits, they knew my entrances. They were whispering, they were giving me the lines, you yeah. know. I felt so cared for yeah. in that performance. I mean, I still remember, you know, I'm, right. I'm getting right. goosebumps. Yeah, I remember uh, uh, losing, a, losing, losing a parent, uh, 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 you know, and uh, at the moment when we are creating, we are vulnerable anyway. Uh, anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, and then suddenly losing uh, 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 like a shelter when parents pass, you know, the, it almost looks like, oh my God, we are orphans. And, and, and you went, uh, you went back, you did the duty that you needed to do. And I was taking without my lead. <laughs> so I had a stage manager sitting in the lovely bed with a script in the hand. And, and I was trying to visualize poetry and really uh, and take the whole thing because you came back in the opening night. But, but you know, yes, the work got done, but it's, it's sort of, speaks about the ethics and and the rootedness with which we created the work with which you held the work because you i was prepared that once you go back uh, i mean i don't even know what it means to lose uh you know till i lost my own dad um you know that but you came back i was ready that you may not come back and uh, somebody will just stand and read and we'll just make it free to the audience and that's i was preparing as you know uh, uh, because that time i was 25 years ago uh, i was less confident about myself and so i just said that's it we'll just say this is the truth and but you came back and you took it and i think the ensemble you mentioned the ensemble and that has become one of the foundation of pandia that uh, the search is always to create an ensemble uh, or a community and and uh, uh, but I remember that and what you came and did and you just sowed every day you sowed because because you keep, if we are we are away from our parents we are away from our family we are away from a parent who just passed you know and we have come there to uh, to make this the priority it better be good you know if fifty is required we'll give ten thousand to the uh, to, uh, to the integrity of the work and. And to me, you know, that, you know, some, uh, when you are doing the work, you can't sit back and analyze, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not an academic uh, with all due respect to academic, you know, uh, because they write about the work, they comment about the work, but after it's done, but while you're creating it, all you have, you know, is just, just that world in which we are creating and it's just rigor and muscle and muscle and rigor and, and, and dealing with life. And um, I think that was a rigorous work that we, that we did that, and especially you did it. It's and and that's why I say Anita, that was that was an unfortunate uh, truth. But uh, isn't all our lives with the type of work that we do is always like the salmon? You know, salmon to lay its uh, um, the yeah. eggs always goes upstream. You know, yes. uh, so I don't well, always. Know, yeah, I don't know how to talk about. I've never had the most optimum. A work a world in which you know, somebody's knocked at my door and given me uh, thousands of dollars go create work it has never happened so we have so our normal is creating in spite of yeah and uh, and yeah. Uh, i uh, yeah i remember that piece and uh, I, yeah. I, honor, I honor your commitment well before i come to the next piece which is also it was triggered with the passing of my father and all the dreams i had you know and the questions i had about um, you know what happens to the to the spirit after it leaves the body. I thought uh, instead of going there immediately, why don't we come back to you after after the inner world? You did some very interesting work. You did something with Tagore, the Hungry Stones. You did some original writing. So why don't you take us through one or two, three works? So each of your works is so different. You don't have like one genre. You don't have like one style. I would say the style you have, Deepankar, is you use physicality. You really want your actors to really, as a dancer, I'm saying, you, they're embodied. You want them completely embodied in whatever the world that you're creating of that particular play. And uh, for me, I've, that's been fascinating, rather than just standing and reading text or spouting dialogue. So can you tell us a little, just a little bit about what you've done since Inner World? So the audience yeah, uh, and i will get uh, to know more uh, uh, 
Yeah, yes. Um, well, 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 you know, uh, your vocabulary gets uh, crafted in the process. You know, it's not that you have a vocabulary which you superimpose regardless of literature or the bodies you're working. Like, I'm sure if you had not choreographed and if you were not the center protagonist of, uh, of Inner World uh, by Mina, uh, you know, the piece would be very different. If somebody yeah. did not come with a dance background, dance choreography, dance body, you know, so the body, like Angikam uh, Bhuvanam Yasya, you know, the, the body is the cosmos, right? And, and, and so, so the body is the narrative that is negotiating the, the, the external narrative of the script. So, you know, uh, and, and even in the previous, um, and, you know, so I think collaboration, the collaboration of dance, a movement, body, narrative, lighting, you know, they're all on equal footings. And how do we create a melody out of this completely independent signature is the, is the desire, right? And so those seeds that was there uh, in uh, now when I'm seeing my work, 25 year old work, you know, the fact you mentioned scale, that's why it's always good to engage, you know, because people talk about your work, then you say, oh my God, that's true. Yes, I, I do work with scale. Uh, you know, it's not that I sit and say, I only work with scale, but when I'm seeing the work, so the scale, the ensemble, the intersectionality and rigor of the work that it, it, uh, uh, you don't enter the stage unless you decide to tear it up. You know, mm -hmm. and by that I mean complete reverence to the space because the space earth is supporting you. So you better deserve that support. So going there with half ass preparation, with weak production, and, and I'm not talking about uh, money. In, I'm not talking about Broadway, you know, helicopter landing on a stage. We have bodies, we have space, we have narrative, we have literature, and we have intentionality. And that needs to the no, people may like or dislike a text. Because you know, a text can speak to you, a text does not speak to somebody else, you know. But nobody should leave saying that it was a lazy production. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so I think those vocabulary, those lexicons of of integrity, you know, start sitting in your bodies. And so that gives you the strength to go to a go to any work that you do now where, where uh, you know when I'm invited to direct an uh, 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 African American playwright, of them working with a Latinx or uh, somebody from the LGBTQ community, uh, you know, you go with the, uh, you know, you attempt to go with just complete openness and understanding and getting to the mind of the writer and not do anything, you know, which, uh, which is not in consultation with the, with the people who have created because the playwright. Or the, or the choreographer, when I work with dance companies, they have given a lot of thought to the work, you know? And as a director, you don't go with this typical patriarchal, you know, Eurocentric way, the way we are taught. Uh, when I went to dire uh, directing training in the Western countries, it was all the director is in the center, rest of the people are puppets. And, and they have no contribution, there's no intelligence, like you are sent directly from God. <laughs> And we are dismantling that patriarchal way of working. So, yeah. so those are the those are the nuggets of uh, vocabulary that has aided the rest of my work. And if you want, um, uh, do you, shall I show some of the work? Yes, that... yes. I think you can at least from the pictures. Sure. Yeah. So, it, 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 Surya, can we have the? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what so, was? Yeah. yeah the, 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 this is when we did. Uh, you know, there's always a political context to my work. This I did Mother Courage, and that's the time under Trump ah. when he was building the wall. You know, ah. and, and putting kids in cages, and 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 you know, I used to think that during uh, during the Holocaust, how did people allow this? Six million people were burned, and there are people in Germany who say, "Oh, we did not know." So, you know, but I was always, it's always good to sort of be self-righteous. But then it's happening in your own time, in your own country, where you are. And so that's why we, I did Mark Brecht, uh, you know, because uh, Brecht really addressed war at all times. And I know yes. talking to people in Bengal, you know, uh, they are Brecht lovers, uh, my uncles. And, you know, so we did Mother Courage. And the person who played Mother Courage was a Latinx woman. You know, so there is a contemporary... 
uh, reasoning in which casting is impacted. So this is a play again. You can't really see in this photograph the scale. It's again a huge warehouse uh, where Mother Courage comes, and this is the daughter uh, who was mute, um, and 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 she becomes how a woman's body becomes a war zone uh, during war. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and at present, if you really see, uh, war is in every almost every right wing country. So that's yeah. another courage. Um, these are uh, actors, uh, Ricardo and Stephanie. Uh, the next, next one, the next. Uh, 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 this play again is very important that, you know, again, like what, the, you know, the Conference of the Birds uh, by uh, Mina adapted it is from Fariduddin Attar's, uh, you know, uh, uh, poems. It was a book of Inayat Khan and also done a translation. So uh, Mina worked with some Ira Iranian scholars, uh, did the whole, uh, so we did this piece, Conference of the Birds again, is a group of birds, uh, you know, in search they go to nine different stops in search of food. And, and again, uh, and once we go there, after years and years and years of flying, when they arrive at the place, they expect heaven to be a place made of marble and honey flowing, etc. All they saw was an empty hut with a mirror. And after years of traveling, all they saw was themselves. Uh, so, you know, as they say that, why does it take a lifetime to cover the shortest distance between you and your soul? Uh, so, mm -hmm. Conference of the Birds um, uh, is, a, is this photograph. And again, as you see, the demographics of my cast is always the, like the streets of North America, uh, with as white folks, people of color. Um, and again, it was a lot, it was, I always worked with a choreographer. It was a lot of movement. Sandy Augustine, uh, she choreographed it. I can go to the next one. Uh, and this is a very, very uh, important piece for me. This was uh, called Five Week. Uh, Meena Natarajan was the playwright, and we again did it in a huge warehouse. Uh, uh, there you get to see a little bit of uh, the scale. Um, uh, but this was about partition, you know, how uh, you know, only five weeks was taken by, uh, you know, uh, by a Brit, uh, uh, you know, Radcliffe. He was given five weeks. In five weeks, he divided our country into lines and lines, and then divided, you know, divided the whole, um, you know, and it is still affecting our psyche and our politics. And so, five weeks, these are actors. This, this was a women's camp um, in which all the people who were working ended up in this refugee camp. And all these, and I took each, again, the body politics, each of these actors. I purposely took from whichever whichever city and language the line was drawn. So I purposely took. Uh, there were there were uh, actors from Lahore. There were actors from Bangladesh, Dhaka. There was actors from Pan different actors from Punjab. There were you know. So wherever the line went, it was very important for me to have body politics. You know the body, the the the. You know many people of color have may not have gone the privilege that I have of going to an MFA or a, a you know training, but but politics is in their body, their breath. It is it is the blood. You know their parents, their grandparents have gone through, uh, and the stories that came out Anita after this post play discussion, people would just. I, we went to a gurudwara and people would hold my hand and say, I saw your play. You know, we were two sisters, and this is a beautiful 80 plus old woman. We were two sisters. My father took me from the back door and we kept running. And my other twin sister jumped into the well. And these are not just dramatic stories, they were real stories. And we have the responsibility to tell these stories. And hence, yeah. how fucking long we keep doing right plays that mean nothing. We have to tell our stories. And you know our playwrights have to be centered. Our stories have to be centered. Anyway, so uh, uh, you know, so again, this was so the body politics is again plays a very strong part. Uh, just like the way uh, I could not imagine inner world without you coming from that land. You know, similarly, the, the, the so the land, and especially with our work with the indigenous community. Um, you know, which I'll share. Uh, you know, the, the the land informs the work. You know, and, mm -hmm. and the more I've worked for years with the indigenous community here, I think that consciousness has taken a front seat in my thinking. 
Yeah, I think the Pankal, you know, looking at the variety, the range of your work, I'm just thinking how fortunate you are because um, America really is so multicultural that you can draw from an actor from Lebanon, an actor from Palestine, if you choose. You know, if that's the subject. And um, we in India, especially me, a Tamil girl living in Tamil Nadu, uh, in the middle or, you know, being uh, being who I am here, I have to play, uh, the, the, the view is very different. For instance, you know, um, throughout this pandemic, I, I didn't feel like dancing, but the one theater play I accepted in the small window that we were able to do live shows, was a play called uh, This Is My Name based on Nathuram Godse's final speech that he gave in defense uh, in court before he was um, sentenced to be hung. And that speech obviously is now very popular. It's there for everybody to read, but um, uh, playwright Paul Zakaria wrote a novella, an award-winning novella, which was then adapted to a play. And I said, if I have to do something, because we live in a time right in India, where it's so binary. It's this or that. You either love somebody, you hate somebody, you cannot have a middle point, you cannot have a middle point of view. And the, and the assassin of Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation, to make him the protagonist of a play, you know, at, at a moment where we have an elected government that's telling us uh, what we should think, what we should do, how we should study. Uh, sometimes I feel almost fortunate, Deepankar, that nobody cares about culture and certainly nobody cares about theater and dance. So you can do some really provocative, interesting work. You can't do this in cinema because it's f so much more in your face. But the playwright was uh, pushed the narrative more. She had, of course, Nathuram Godse's arguments. But in between, she had like if she had a very conservative, obviously like a Tamil Brahmin kind of a, a scenario of, you know, talking about the greatness of the Bhagavad Gita, the righteousness of war. So that it, it was not in, it was not connected, but it would land differently for the audience. And they could see either the irony of the irony of what was happening and they could make up their own minds. And I had a lovely cameo of trying to be uh, somebody that a television reporter was going to interview me for who I was. And I was going to say, you know, I really want to uh, talk about um, the politics of desire of Ahalya or the erotic poetry of Andal or, you know, and there's this male producer, oh my God, no, madam, no erotica, no, let us just be, will you do the goddesses and will you do lotus? It's so beautiful, madam. So, you know, it was a, it was a cameo that written within the play which to me was so interesting, so interesting to be a part of, because very politically charged, uh, a message that had, it was laced with satire and irony to me, something like that in, at this time has made so much more sense than just getting onto uh, the digital platform and regurgitating old dance repertoire, you know? Right, right. Uh, yeah. Right. So uh, before so I come... Reason. Yeah. What we're talking yeah. about re relevance, Anita, right? You have done, yeah. you have done amazing. I mean, uh, you work with what the givens are, and yes. and, if the, and if the givens is isolatedness. I mean, I mean that piece. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, yes, you can continue doing that. It's like a river that's flowing. You know, this beautiful dusky woman, and you know, with all the mudras, you can say that the person on top of the hill came down and gave me a flower. I mean, all that has its place. I'm not saying softness and erotica. Uh, uh, I mean, but the point is the relevance. You know, at the time, like you were saying, when our country is being divided, is and and you saw what we went through uh, past four years, and I'm not privileging only the last four years. I mean, we've gone down from slavery, but past four years was just that. I mean, uh, I'll I'll share with you, but what you are saying is absolutely it reaches my heart. Um, and, 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 and those, that, but they, but, you know, and they think that, but we are engaged with community, 150 or 200 people every night, right? And the postpaid discussions is where the conversation happens. Yes. And, you know, in the, during my training days, Liviu Chule, uh, he was from, uh, in the, <laughs> he, he told me that how, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in, uh, in Romania, uh, I assisted him in a, quite a few plays, and he was a very rigorous teacher. He really taught me to get to the depth of the word. But he would say that 
you know, the, every set of his, his father was, continued theater when theater was banned and in Romania, and every set had two layers. One was the same level of the audience, and, and another was a second story for no reason. And what happens is that when they're giving their political messages, you know, that will always be on the second floor. And, and on the ground floor, they have these beautiful, lovely horses. Somebody will walk a horse from right to the left, from left to the right, and these government officials who will come, you know, will only look at the horse. Whereas the people of the revolution are looking at the second floor. So, you know, I think it's very important to sort of, um, you know, see the power of our work, you know, even though the impact might not be what the film reaches, the film world reaches and the yeah. resources that they get, but important work is happening in the minds of playwright, in the bodies of a choreographer and a dancer, um, you know, and, and it sounds, your, the piece I want to really read that script sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, we, we were supposed to um, uh, begin to tour it and we were uh, scheduled to go to Veena Pani Chawla's Adi Shakti, but you know, the second wave hit and everything has been, you know, thrown off Kelter and we'll have, going to have to wait until it becomes safe again. But yeah, it was just that one play which uh, to me made a lot of sense. It was very, very courageous to do it. And so, as I said, uh, it's a good thing that nobody cares about theater. Otherwise, you know, we would have, probably had a lot of people beating down our doors. But very interestingly, Deepankar, the very fact that I chose to be in a play that put Nathuram Godse as the protagonist, I lost friends. I mean, I lost friends because they, they thought that I have made some, I have made, went wrong in some moral judgment. Like, how could I be in a play that sort of endorses Godse? It doesn't endorse Godse, it's just taking his words. His speech was uh, obviously a very compelling speech, just on, it, it's like a piece of theater on its own, where he argues in his defense. And uh, it's one, and, and even today, if you go to Maharashtra, there are people who actually respect him. So, so the point is, if you look at it as theater, and if you look at it as an artist who makes a choice to do something because it, it is so beautifully scripted, you know, how, how is it possible for these shallow-minded people, oh, well, and probably it's a good thing that I lost these friends, you know, who have stopped talking to me. But a lot has happened during the pandemic. But I thought before we go into the pandemic, um, I, we have to talk about this, the second work we did together, Dipankar, which was fueled by my dreams of my father's passing and my inability to see him. And uh, the question about, what the, what happens to the spirit as it journeys after the physical body? Uh, we called it Vaitarini, the crossing. But do you remember how we started working? We were you were not in Minneapolis. I was not in Chennai. We were in another country, Canada, because that was that was where it was commissioned. We worked in that little small studio. Remember of Joanna yeah. Joanna Das's Kathak studio, and right. you were imagining scale. You were imagining a hundred foot ceiling, and you were imagining, you know sheets and plastic sheets and a, and a ghoulish spirit and you told me i mean you don't have to do anything you just have to stand there when the lights come on and you have to just think buto and you have to have your arms like this your fingers stretched and you are trying to push a 50 ton wall and that's how you're going to start your movement and it was the most difficult five to seven minutes because uh, you, of course, love your ropes. And so we decided there would be Dharma Artha Kama. Which that's what uh, the spirit is struggling not to leave the physical yeah. world. And it ha but it has to go. And uh, a, your vision of that clock and, you know, I, again, as I said, the scale, we were at the Harbour Front Theatre, beautiful theatre. Yeah. Uh, but again, it was it was not an easy subject. I mean, we, you and I decided to collaborate and do a work on death, you yeah. know, to, uh, to open this. We have very interesting stories, but I think I want, um, I want uh, the audience to see the clip. Yeah, so can yeah, you see the clip, please, of Vaitarani, The Crossing? Thank <laughs> you. 
So Vaitarini uh, is that wow. river of yeah that Vait the river of blood and memories that the that according to the Vedic philosophy the the spirit or the spirit comes to the banks of after a certain number of days and that was that was it I mean again scale you know mm -hmm. that long cloth I mean we went to a, we went to fabric stores we went yeah. and got fish fishermen's ropes and. Uh, and remember that we did the score sitting in a studio apartment of that wonderful composer Debashish. Yeah, Debashish. Uh, Debashish Sinha. Debashish Sinha. Yeah, Debashish Sinha. Yes, fellow Bengali. Yes. I, I, we had a little little putti kade, if we call it, you know, studio apartment. Yes. Computer yes. here is dead there, and uh, he but just the brother made up. some unbelievable music, man. He was Fantastic really. Fantastic music. Yeah. And we, you and I might have got a standing ovation for the premiere in Canada that was commissioned by Lata Pada's Sampradaya Creations. But when I, when we brought it back to Chennai in the December season, oh my God, what a stir it caused. People yes. got up and walked out, Deepankar, yes. in yes. spite yes. of it being part of their philosophy. And we say from the moment of birth, the spirit, the Atma is preparing itself for, the, for its journey, for its final. And yet people were so uncomfortable. I mean, they came up to you and said the oddest things, right? Yes, they said, either, either enough, uh, either this is now, how can you do this work? I said, oh, I guess you didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> I said, no, I'm, I'm not saying that you have to like everything, but but why didn't you, what, what was the problem? Is this a dance? There is not even a smile on the dancer's face. I said, but they are talking about death. What is so funny? Uh, uh, is it, no, no, Oro, oh, how can a dancer be on stage? You know, no makeup, no, nothing, not even smiling, no jewelry. I said, yeah, maybe, you know, but this is not the type of story. We are talking about the depths of where the soul journey is. And, and uh, you know, and I remember that the there was a lot. Either people just completely embraced it because of the emotionality and the truth of the what we were trying to say. Yeah. And the people where it jarred because it was not their uh, usual narrative of a sabha. Uh, you know what they see. You know, or stories of Radha and Krishna and Mira in love with God. And I, I'm I don't mean to disparage uh, those, but that that has its place. But the context of the work is what we are trying to do. And, and also, you know, you're talking about scale, Anita. I also want to just say that uh, scale, we are all, what we had was plastic strips as the huge yeah. wall, right? Yes. Plastic strips painted in blue and ropes and cloth. So we are, we are, when we, we are talking about scale, we are not talking about huge multi-million dollar set. We are talking no. about the multi-million dollar imagination, you know, yes. and that's the scale. And, and then also you performing it, you know, so much of calorie and martial arts that I use is because you're trained when your body is moving with those bamboo sticks. You know, it is not this dainty little soft beauty, dusky little woman. <laughs> you know, this is like a ferocious spirit, you know, journeying uh, to embrace or to come away from our Maya. So uh, that is a powerful piece. Wow, you bring back so many memories, Anita. Yeah, well, well, that was 20 years ago, Deepankar. There was five years between Inner World and, you know, Vaitarini. And I remember for many people watching it, it was cathartic. They, had, they may have probably uh, lost a loved one. They wept. Uh, the people who got up and left, interestingly, were the elderly. I think yes. uh, did it did it feel did it did they feel that that time was approaching? But I remember now after so many years when pe some people come to me and said, "Oh my God, that is that was so powerful. The images are still in my mind. The silence, the power, and the breath. I mean, you asked me to use my breath, the yes. panting. Uh, <sighs> you know, just that that it it was it was a very tough piece, very very tough piece to perform to be solo on stage for 30, 36 minutes." you know, without the kutrama of what dancers yes. do. But that's what I mean. It's been so powerful. You've always been able to take me out of my skin, which is what I've always wanted when I collaborate. Because there is, when people see me tall, you know, this tall, good looking, uh, you know, very confident, I can speak well, etc., etc. I dance well, all that. I'm trained in theater. They want to put me in a certain box. They want me to put, only want to portray me in a certain way. 
So I remember people coming and telling me I was reading Antigone's poetry and something about a Sri Lankan displacement where the, they had to flee and they couldn't even bury bury their, 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 their own dead. And somebody said, I don't believe you You can ever be do anything uh, like a refugee or something. You just, you look too high class. Right. Well, well, what I don't want to do is put, put brown skin or black face. I yes. just want to, you know, I want to be able to be, uh, to give my, as you said, 2000% if yes. the director wants in that yeah. moment, you right. know? So I said, your, you, your mind is locked. Yep. You know, you expect to see me in a certain way. You expect yep. to see me all, you know, in some kind of a frame and yep. I'm resisting that. So I've yep. always, I've always wanted to work with people who would challenge me because what is the point? What is the right. point of being part of making art? If you cannot learn from it, grow from it, somehow amplify and become more human or more fully yourself. Yes. You know, in the making and the process of it. And both you and I, Dipankar, we, we really enshrine and endorse process. Yes. Process, yeah? Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and, and so, I mean, theatres can be far more political than dance. That is for sure. Because the dancing body has a certain vocabulary. It, it's very potent. It can uh, communicate a lot. But to make a political piece... You need other things. You need a set. And I think the words, language becomes, the spoken word uh, becomes a very powerful tool, Deepankar. So uh, from this moment, I think, do you want to, I mean, you can, of course, add uh, what I any, but I think uh, we'd love to know because we've been talking for an hour. So, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I can't, uh, um, move to the pandemic and your work with First Nation people without mentioning uh, Tagore. Because, oh my God, Bengalis are so fiercely possessive. Some Bengalis, maybe not all. Very much like Tamils are very chauvinistically possessive about that language and only some people can do it and what do you know about it? So I remember, I remember being commissioned uh, by a private arts company to do, I mean, everybody who is non-Bengali uh, were commissioned dance and they were to, do, to do Tagore in Calcutta at the Birla Sabhagar. This was in 2012. Uh, it probably marked, I don't know which anniversary of his birth or passing. And so I picked this uh, with consultation with uh, Ritu Parnagosh, who I had met, had a fabulous two days with him, thanks to Sharmila Bishwas. The ODC dancer, and we sat and we spoke about Tagore, and here and then I was introduced to a Robindra Shangit singer, and I knew uh, that uh, one of the great Carnatic composers, Muthuswami Dikshatar, uh, was uh, had created songs which Tagore had listened to when he visited Kalakshetra, you know, in his travels in the south, and he was so impressed with some of the Carnatic tunes that he took. Uh, the singers, and he rewrote the, the lyrics because he was Brahmo, and so there was no idol worship. So he changed the music of Meenakshi, goddess Meenakshi of Madurai, to Boshanti Bhuvana Mohini. You know, there were so many kinds of parallels. So anyway, I did this, I did this work, and I'd chosen, I had chosen uh, Tagore's uh, big epic poem called Prithabi. Uh, the earth, where he talks about the earth being a cruel mother, you know, like you, you, you give birth to children, but you also take their lives away, you know, so you, you, you can't be fully trusted. People think you're, you're all this nurturing and giving, but oh, you can be terrible, you can be de death, you can be destructive. So he was not talking of some benign, you know, benign energy. So I had tried to explore, it was, there was multimedia, I tried to explore. And at the end of it, uh, it was almost like, you know, like a tsunami kind of thing and a very quiet, and then a kind of a rebirth again. At the end of it, there was a Q and A in, at the Bidla Sabhagar. And there were three men sitting very grumpy like this. I think they had started like this and they ended up like this, right? Like this, with the hands folded. And uh, then one of them put their hand, yes, and, and they said, uh, you know, Madam, uh, 
you know, I am a big fan of Tagore and I came here expecting a religious and spiritual experience. So I'm sitting on the stage, you know, and um, so I said, sir, I'm really sorry you forgot to go to the mandir today. <laughs> and I am not a substitute for that. <laughs> <Sorry>. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, so like, you know, how can you, what do you know of Tagore? How can you okay. do Tagore? So I'm coming to the point of who assumes the right to speak for whom? You know, like, and we are now at a time where so many translations of our Indian literature are available. Tagore in Telugu or Tamil, or like, as I said, Muthuswami Dikshatar, who wrote in Sanskrit, and Tagore being inspired and created like eight or nine songs based on Karnatic ragas, right. you know? And uh, we, don't, we don't want to focus on that. We just want to focus on how dare a non sort of Rabindrik or non-Bengali do Tagore. And it hasn't changed, Deepankar. That kind mm. of possessiveness or chauvinism hasn't yeah. changed. But why yeah. would theater and dance want to be, you know, we should be able to be open to anything, which is really why I think um, uh, I want to segue into um, a work uh, that I did during the digital pandemic. But mm. before that, I want you as a Bengali to also tell me, because I know you're not also a favorite with the Rabindriks. Uh, <laughs> well, the thing is that, you know, uh, people who question, uh, they have to question the blood that's flowing in my uh, body. Uh, you know, my mother, I've grown up in a house uh, with Rabindra Sungit, and my mother um, uh, sang and choreographed and my sisters danced and, you know, and so, but oh, oh, I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, yes, first of all, I want to say that, yes, we become visa officers, you know, to our mm. culture, uh, you know, and, and, and it's self-appointed, uh, self-anointed uh, know-all. If there's a degree called I know it all, well, I'll tell you, male bodies have that and embraced it in all its splendor. I know it all, right? Uh, and that's, that's the attitude. Uh, over here, R Rita Mustafi, she's a Kata, very well-known Kathak dancer, a student of uh, Pandit Biju Maharaj. Uh, she was here, she invited me and we collaborated to direct Kudito Pashan, um, you know, uh, Hungry Stones. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, I, and she had very powerful women dancers and there were very, uh, not many male uh, dancers. So I had cast Derek, uh, just like the way you came in from the world of dance and theater, into uh, uh, the work that we have created. So I wanted bodies uh, that are good with handling. Uh, there are so many dancers, they are doing ferocious work on stage. You give them five lines, they freeze. And the opposite happens also. Like actors, yes. when I say, when in my audition notices, when I say I want people who can move with their body, they say, but I'm not a dancer. I said, but you walk, right? And yeah. are you physically conscious of your bodies? So, you know, so I had cast uh, Derek Phillips, who's a brilliant African-American dancer who has learned from Rita for 20 years and is a, and is a contemporary African-American dancer, amazing with the body. Then there, um, then, uh, there, there were uh, two other actors. One was white uh, dancer. And I took them from the dance world. I didn't superimpose an actor to do awkward movements on stage. And Kulito Pashan happened. And again, I worked with uh, a visual artist to do the set. Uh, for Kulita Pashan and uh, I worked with a sculptor and uh, and so it was so interesting and I generally when I'm creating I don't ask 20 people do you like it how is it how because you know it's a because I I don't let me finish my work and then you comment uh, but yeah. Rita Di, but it's a collaboration and for her it was very important to get validation from the Bengali um, uh, 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 local Bengali community and I and I and I told her that is that what you want but she was producing it so I was very politely suggesting, I said, cast a hog, let us finish, and tar pore dakun, let, then you call. Uh, but she said, no, 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 now we are again, before the tech, I should call. So they came, uh, and they were all these patriarchs and matriarchs sitting, each one with a more grumpy face than the other throughout the whole rehearsal. And, and then Shanu Mati, Shanu Lahiri, I know I'm speaking to people in Bengal, uh, Shanu Lahiri was a, uh, was one of again Dr. Ramanujan was one of the person I met at the point she shifted my thinking. Shanu Lahiri she was the principal of Bishwa Bharati. She was a well known. She was in her 80s, I think late 70s, but she was walking with a stick. She came and sat down with a stick like that, 
and she is like Tagore, like if it can be, it's an ocean, she has swam in it. Uh, she has, you know, uh, her whole painting, she was uh, influenced by Tagore and more Bengal and more. She comes from the family where her brothers were Shotubit Rai's, uh, you know, consultant. They were, uh, her brother was called the, no uh, the, the novelist of the novelist. I mean, so it's not coming from an unresearched point and body. So she was sitting there, the, the tech finished, and this eight-year-old woman, uh, she got up, and I thought she'd fall. She dropped her stick, and she just shouted out to the actors, and said that today I see, and I know that Tagore will continue. That is what she said. And I'm not talking about my work. And just imagine the dancers and the context and the script of Tagore, you know? And she said, this shows me that Tagore will live just like the way all these Western playwrights are living, called under the term classical, you know, and uh, and I uh, and later on I met uh, Shanu Mashi because Rita Di was very. Uh, she, Rita Di said, "Do you want to talk to them?" I said, "Till I finish my work, I don't want to talk to uh, anybody." Um, and so Rita Di, of course, went to a closed room, and the Bengali knows they ripped her apart. They say, "Eta Rabindrik noy." This is not Rabindrik, and and. And uh, you know, and then one of them came and told me, Tumi Shottajit Rai uh, cinema dako see Manikda's cinema, and then you'll understand what Rabin Rik is. I said, you know, I have read everything written and articulated by Shottajit Rai, and Shottajit Rai has said when a a, a, then there's a transliteration from literature to film, you know, you take agency and you cannot just so your idea of loyalty is a loyalty of spirit. But yes. it automatically shifts genre. So I said, Acha Rabin Vikna, Acha. then I asked her. So then Shanu Mashi came into the room and Shanu Lahiri, she is this. Uh, so Shanu uh, <laughs> Mashi said that, Acha, Apni Bolunto, what is Rabindri? She asked that uh, uh, mm. the people, just tell me what is Rabindri? Because, because I have lived, taught, been with students for years and I, uh, in Vishwa Bharati. So Apni Aonte Bolun Rabindri Taki. Not one of them said one word, but it was heavily criticized. You know, so this, I, on the one hand, saying, taking pride. You know, I, I also, my chest fills with pride when we are talking about Tagore, but you have to do your research. It was Tagore who said, all that is good and true in humanity is ever waiting at our gates to be invited. Yes. Let us not ask as to which country it belongs, but welcome it at our homes. So, and if you read Tagore's speeches about religion of, I'm, uh, you know, we are working with this essay called Religion of Man, which are his, uh, which are his lectures. And before that, I read Nationalism, which are his lectures. Both of them are current day politics of the world, right? Nationalism yes. and religion. So the next thing I was joking, is the next reading to read, politics, politicians, nationalism, religion, politicians. But if you see that mind, it is an intricate mind who has critically analyzed what we are talking about, right? So these self-appointed, know all, and I'm not saying that we don't have places to learn. We have to do our research. We, you know, we must learn. We must, but at the same time to say only Bengalis can create, you know, Tagore, you know? But that is what racism is, right? Here I'm dealing with white people saying only white people, white directors, white playwright, white actors will do plays for the white audience. You know, then where does somebody who looks like you and me, what place do we have? But aren't we doing the same thing with our parochialism and chauvinism back home? You know, so we have to question the spirit. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying appropriation does not happen. Like cisgendered males, you know, uh, directing LGBTQ or trans, you know, uh, uh, work. I'm not, I understand the politics of individualized signatures, but yes. you cannot restrict, you cannot restrict imagination. You cannot restrict, give a, give a, doc, uh, give a nationality to imagination. What nationality does imagination have? Which damn immigration point do we have to cross, you know, with immigration in our body, with imagination in our body, you know, and, and this self-appointed, you know, it, it, and what happens, that is why we lose the next generation. The next generation doesn't want to give a damn about these, you know, uh, patriarchal modalities 
of you know you don't know enough we will never know enough we will never know enough because when we are talking about tagore when we are talking about bharati when we are talking about these composers you know they are oceans but let us allow entry into the swimming pool man otherwise we'll never know so if you know so much then write a damn book you know and instead of limiting the imagination of artists because we are doing relevant work to me this essay which i may dramatize about religion of man now with what is happening in india what is happening in this country what is happening in myanmar how is gaza and west bank getting bombed by israel you know and how the politicians are a hand in glove with our politicians in india you know to to me that's relevance that's work that's breath you know so allow us to engage with our elders like tagore who have written about it who they've thought about it you know at a time when when there was independent struggle in bengal you know so to think that you know much more than our teachers and our elders of the past and you are the damn visa officer who will say anita ratnam is from tamil nadu how dare she engage with literature which is mine you know so those conversations have to be challenged and you know and artists like you and artists who are creating and i saw some of the artists in 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 this art matters uh, panel are challenging those things because we are not afraid if i am afraid of my own community to touch the blood that flows in my veins you know then how will i negotiate with this white racism you know we have to have space to make mistakes you know and and, and so to, to do this parochial crap that you know you i cannot touch i'm being a bengali how the hell did i touch uh, you know sangam literature i should not be touching sangam literature or, or it should be only a tamil and uh, you know like like over here the white world when i did you know ajax sophocles is ajax greek play uh, 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 and i cast a nigerian they write who's a brilliant physical uh, marathon runner and a filmmaker i cast him as a greek uh, warrior in the post play discussion he asked me what right do you have to do this with my what with our classic i said what right i'm repeating it for the audience your question and he's a very well known he was there to critique my work i said you i'm repeating my your question what right does this body this bengali body from india right uh, have what right do i have to work with your classic i said this is a damn greek play how many greek uh, actors do you see on stage we are using the language is english all north american bodies i said your problem is you saw a black man on stage right if white white americans he would not have asked the question but here was a nigerian brother doing a critique the work i am open to critiquing of the craft but you know but you cannot critique oh you are a tamilian how can you do tagore or or you are you know then your nationality your caste your gender all these are question you know and so what you are doing is basically uh, you know restricting yourself man covid exists already to restrict us you know yes. we, don't, we don't need an empty ocean you know uh, 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 to restrict uh, restrict us and so anyway so now to me what what you said we i negotiate with that every day so basically i'm saying that i should only do indian playwrights which i love to do you know but in india you, you know we do so we grew up in a culture where you know our our confluence of religion or uh, that is the india i come from and that's the india that is that you know that my parents taught me that that we ha we have we are a we are a fulcrum of intersectionality so this type of conversation i um, you know there are people in the field you know and you know people who have a name like you do you know uh, we we should just uh, you know the, the people used to say that you know we have learned that art reflects society well i have never seen people of color being reflected in that mirror which people talk about so i have changed that thing i said you know if the mirror does not reflect us you know we are going to break the damn mirror <laughs> and create another mirror which reflects all of us because that mirror never reflected us you know and, and so this conversation is very dangerous like when people say it's a china virus 
you know, like when Trump started saying the China virus, all Asian Americans are getting attacked on the streets, which includes, you know, I told my family, don't buy into that shit because your brother over here is getting attacked on the street because they think I bought in the damn virus because, you know, our supposed erstwhile uh, person on top believe that it's the China virus. And my family back home sometimes say, but you know, China, we should, uh, we should put an embargo. You know, those comments have now the, in the world of social media, what you say, like the same challenge you faced, you know, the, so I think these conversations, these questions need to be challenged and we do not have clear answers, but it's okay to be living with uncertainty. I think the bunker that, you know, there, there are a group of people who use their privilege, their position, their capacities, like you and I do, to enable, to support, to commission, to mentor, to open, you know, to, to, to bring up, to whatever. And I think that there are some who just don't want to do, but their attempts are to undo. Yeah. They, don't have a, they don't have an action plan. They're just there to try to pull down. So uh, when you engage with the politics of race, with the politics of color, in India, we, are, we, we have the terrible curse of the politics of caste, you know, and, and especially in say the classical dance world or the, uh, the classical music world. So I have very quietly, you know, Deepankar, I've worked for the last 30, 35 years with uh, my ancestral village and trying to revive a 15th century uh, theater form. It's an all night theater ritual in which it's a completely different community of hereditary artists. You know, I've, I haven't put it out on social media and all that, but the, it, for 25, 30 years to get to know them, to help them remember what they have forcibly wanted to erase from their memory, to try and revive, to restage, to restructure, to try and coax another generation or somebody of another kin uh, is, uh, has been very difficult. And, uh, and, you know, as you said, when I came back from America, you know, what did I want to do? I didn't want to start a dance class. I didn't want to start a dance school. I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to do Arangetrams because I said, I came back to a city where there are already 1,500 schools. So what can I do with my training and my experience in television and theater? What can I do? How, how, how can I bring it? And that's how I started Nartaki you know, yep. the dance directory and the, and the web portal. And it's a, it's a very interesting journey because I said, if I don't want to teach, I want to be able to be in a position to give back or to amplify and not to hoard. When I try to get uh, addresses and uh, addresses from gurus about their, their students, they wouldn't give it. The reason would be, oh, if I give you my student's number and address, then you will contact her directly and she won't be under my control. This is actually what people said to me when I was trying to compile names and addresses. So Nartiki is also, it's been a 30 year journey, 30 years since 1992, you know, built very slowly, brick by brick with just three women. Me, my webmaster, and a content editor, you know, and every single, it's just been, I've just been at it. So for those who want to, you know, talk about privilege and this and that, it's like, just get it done. Just do it no matter what. So when COVID hit the punker, I said, okay, everybody was jumping onto the digital stage and doing their regular repertoire. And I said, what can we do with the idea of what is now? You can't go out, so go in. You know, so that was that was the idea for Boxed. It's like that, let's that is. let's discover a new generation of artists, young artists who will not wear costume, who will just be in their regular pants or their jogger pants or sweatpants or however they were spending their COVID time, and take a moment in the a corner of the house and just create two minutes of movement. You know, that's it. And when I first reached out to classical dancers for Boxed, and I said, look, none of you, don't worry. We had an editing team, a technical team telling them where to put the camera. Once they said, can I choose the bath shower? Can I choose a kitchen table? Can I do this? And Ramanji did a fabulous piece under, under the table, echoing the migrant workers. But with, and the editors were saying, yes, just do it from your cell phones. Just take two angles, send it to us. We'll make sure you look good. So it was like, the dancers were stripped bare, in, you know, in more ways than one, because COVID just everything came to a stop. I'm talking of May, 
May uh, 2020, April, May 2020. Right. Right. And we just saw that, uh, an explosion of the most amazing talent. Brilliant. I was just the producer, right? Yeah. So, so may I share uh, uh, two clips? Uh, they, I put it together for two minutes. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. one, and, and these two uh, dancers just chose the most unusual places in which to, uh, um, to uh, illuminate the idea of boxed. Can we have yes. the video, please, Surya? swimsuit in a bathtub <laughs> it's exploding every single you know every trigger and then comes this young freestyle hip-hop dancer you know choosing the dinner table you know so it was like it we just pushed these kids to just say just go for it just you have nothing to fear you know you That's have amazing. absolutely nothing to fear and look at the talents that just emerged we, had, we created 40 two-minute world premieres, Deepankar, from yes, 40 yes. artists, you know? And this, it was, you know, you know, uh, Deepankar, when you're in the doing, you don't know the impact anything is going to make. You're, you're just creating. You know, you're in the doing, you're trying to catalyze, you know, support your team, your editors, your producer, this, this artist, talking to the, to the music composers, no, 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 this is not right, no, send it back, this angle was not okay. You're so involved in that. And then yeah. when it starts, the ripples start building, you know, yeah. you say, wow, we really created something. We really created something unusual. And with Boxed, we were the first out of the gate. We had what we call the uh, early advantage. Everybody was then doing similar things later. But I just, it was just an idea that came, just came to me when uh, April, we were just, India just locked its borders. So what do we do with the givens? With yes. the givens, you know, that's for me very important with working with the givens of the here and now. So for me, the tropes now of the Radha Krishna and the Murugan Valli and Rama Sita, they're not working for me. I mean, I've done very successful works yes. Uh, yes. based on that, but they, they're not speaking to me now. So I think we need to come to now, you know, what is really working. Uh, for me, I have to push it. If there's something Tamil, I want a non-Tamil, non-Bharatnatyam, non the, no, that kind of a body to attempt it. You know, yeah. I want a Manipuri dancer to do Tamil poetry. I mean, that's what yeah. I'm looking at. She would have yeah. never heard that. She would have never even thought about it. I'll have to give her the link. Um, yeah. And if we have time, we can play Andal's Garden. But, uh, but that's what I want. I yeah, want, like, the God belongs to everybody. I want Andal from Tamil Nadu, an 8th century yeah. voice, to belong to everybody. 
you yes. know yeah so this, it's not this just is amazing uh, anita i've been following boxed and, and i see I, and i've seen most of the uh, pieces i mean and the thing this is just amazing work i mean the sister that i saw and the brother i mean and the thing is that that's that is our truth you know yes. and and in box yes it the physical realism that's why to me these terminologies this is abstract and no you tell me is this box a realistic piece of dance or an abstract piece of dance to me it's a realism we cannot go out we cannot meet people we cannot <laughs> right so so to me this terminology is realism abstract but this is powerful work it is field changing work you know i think that like what you have done with nartaki before we move on i just want to acknowledge yeah. and affirm what you did with nartaki at a time when you did it and even now there is i mean people can and it is already digitized i'm saying innovation people talk about innovation artists have been innovating since time immemorial it is not a term which mba courses have invented right i mean uh, you know there comes a time in your career when uh, uh, by god's grace and a lot of hard work and a community support you, you are not really waiting for the uh, waiting for just another opportunity or creating opportunities right so then you start thinking of the field you know the field in which you are in because yes. you know that you know you're not uh, uh, because it takes energy i mean what the amount of labor that must have gone behind creating nartaki it's you i mean that itself is a five hour talk you can do you know yes. it takes labor and who's resourcing the labor labor needs to be resourced you know and the um, that nartaki is a field changing field impact you know and this box to me this idea of the box you know in kathakali they say um, you know that you cross uh, in Kath you can cross an ocean in a bucket <laughs> mm. right so it is the power of the imagination uh, uh, right and and what i just saw this sister create in a tiny little bathtub and this yes. brother creating in his own living room on a <laughs> table and chair but The, the and it is not just what we see visually the music that he create is rooted the body yeah. is rooted it is a brown body using brown music in relevant characters creating with relevance so yes. to me i just want to acknowledge that it's an amazing i've been following that box and i and marvel at the imagination of people you know that you don't always so to me this is scale you know it is scale because in the givens this is scale that bathtub is the biggest scale that covid has put us in and yes. this sister created unbelievable movement in that this brother yeah. i mean from the chair to the table to the chair i mean he's working with his ecosystem and yes. and, and and to me this is imagination which does not have a nationality but it has a signature of the body that we bring in the intersection of imagination and i just want to acknowledge you for that is amazing work thank you so much dipankar i want to uh, you to tell us now um, about because i know you're very deeply rooted with the first nation communities first nation for audiences are the native americans they call first nation because they were there first before before the white man came and christopher columbus and um, it's it's a it's a fashion now the punker i feel that uh, you start every event occasion by acknowledging that you live on stolen land you know of the people of whatever tribe but you have actually worked with these first nation people who who um, their presence in america is a shame on on american politics in a sense they've they've let them down so so badly and i think yes. now in the pandemic we are beginning to hear the voices from canada about the shocking graves of school children yes. that have been that have been uncovered but you've worked you know consistently with the first nation peoples and so just tell us about uh, it is one of the works that you've yeah. done with them yeah maybe the the last work that i did now after this year when everybody is vaccinated actually if i could invite surya ji to share that uh, the last picture Uh, and i'll talk about the because sometimes when i talk so i get so engrossed in the politics people think that i don't do art <laughs> politics is the, so yeah. this 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 photograph um uh, uh, that that you are seeing on the right hand side here sharon day she's a uh, she's a medicine medicine woman 
Uh, she's a, a person with two spirits, she's a lesbian. Um, and she wrote the script called Missouri River Water Walk. And she, uh, she walked the entire, she walks every Native American indigenous uh, artist have this uh, ritual that they go to the top of the river, like here in Mississippi, I stay next to the Mississippi, you pick up, the, they uh, take a bucket of water and they walk all the way to New Orleans. These women, it's a women's ritual. So she has been doing it forever. And, and, and so we commissioned her to write a script to chronicle this work that's going on because when you, and they, you know, so, and she's a brilliant writer, brilliant artist. So we did this play and Surya did, if you can uh, share the other, another picture that is uh, in the green, yeah. So, so this is COVID seating six feet apart, uh, you know, of course, everybody was tested when they came in and this is a group of artists. So here the scale, um, uh, Anita, was the the space, the environment of this public park, because, you know, people, we, you know, we did it outside and Sharon display is about this whole water walk. I uh, just wanted to share and look at the audience, everybody's sitting, <laughs> so six feet apart from each other, uh, and they were all encouraged to wear masks. Um, you know, you know. So, so we did it outside. Of course, here the set is created by God, and uh, the and the mission so on. But you spend all the money on sound designer because we had a brilliant sound designer where even whispers could be heard. You know, uh, two thousand feet apart, and it was next to the river. Um, wow. So, uh, so just wanted to because for Sharon it was important that um, uh, that it, she wants to do this play next to Mississippi. Um, and so that, that's what we did. Uh, so they walked for 56 days, these women, you know, and, uh, and it's an amazing, so uh, yeah, thank you, Surya. Um, so the work with, with indigenous community, um, uh, uh, we, we, yeah, we, uh, we have, you know, the legacy of all our work is from, it comes down from three basic ideas. One is colonization, which we are all products of, we are speaking English, uh, now uh, we go to whatever uh, schools and and colonization, slavery against the African American community, and genocide against the native people, native community. You know, so all the systems that have flown down are uh, have the legacy of these three realities, right? So if you really know our history, we wonder. Uh, we should not be surprised because you know when the roots of the bark of the tree coming from these three legacies, the fruits are that, the politicians are that, the, what divides us is that, is the fruit of that. So till we till the soil and, or go to, you know, indigenous uh, communities. And so for us, it was indigenous community, it was so important for me when I started meeting here, they got an immigrant from India to be the resident director at these regional theater. But when I met native elders who have been in the field for 50 years, they have never entered the lobby of this theater where they have got me from across Seven Ocean. So then I started realizing there's something wrong in this picture. So I started connecting with that. This one I'm talking about 30 years ago. And I found such an alliance. I know you have done work with Joy, uh, yes. Joy Harju, right? You know? Yes, so, yes. So native community, so then the more we met with the native elders and the more we met with native artists, I mean, they don't have to be privileged. They're brilliant artists and they're contemporary. We always, all my native friends, indigenous friends from Dakota community, Dakota, Ojibwe, they're multiple nations, you know, and they, whenever people talk about indigenous, as if they are weavers and all traditional arts, but they're not talking about people who are right next to you, who are doing contemporary work, just like what you yeah. do, you have a you have you may have some vocabulary which is coming from classical, but look at box what you just showed. Which part of it is classical? Which part of it is contemporary? Which part of it is postmodern? I mean, the bodies don't know these terminologies. The body just creates, right? So the native community, we we found very close relationship we have, and we have it as a system, not just the idea of diversity in, in white mind that you have one yeah. person of color you know, in the third act will come and give a mail, uh, you know, so we have, so it has to be a systemic shift, right? So we have native elders in our board, we have native um, uh, uh, people in our, in our staff, we have my mentee, I have two directing mentees, we, uh, we, one is Palestinian American Ismail Khalidi, and I have Ojibwe um, Windigo, 
His name is Sir Curtis Kirby the Third, Giant Heart. Um, he is my mentee. So Sharon Day, who is my elder, who my director this play, her grandson is my directing mentee and is going out. My promise is that I will, uh, we, we are going to do everything possible to make him the best director in the world. So, so the indigenous artists have such strong influences because you on my thinking, because there are lots of the culture that we come from, Nita, are so much in alliance with how the indigenous people think, you know, about our care for the environment, about, uh, you know, gr being growing up uh, in cities, like wherever my father was transferred, Delhi, Bombay, Lucknow, Kanpur, Madras, you know, I must say that I have developed a connection with the land or my consciousness that land matters after journeying with the indigenous community because for them land is all right their land has been taken away they have been pushed into reservations you know but uh, and so the indigenous community form a very strong part of my soul and my thinking and yes it is beyond and that is why uh, uh, when when we work with indigenous community we just step back we leave the room unless called in because mm. You know, we are not doing any favors by working with indigenous community. It is their land. It is their world. It is so you step out, uh, and then you come if you are called in. And uh, you know, so that's another part of our ensemble that we are working on as to you know how do you enter a community, and how do you exit a community? How do you center? You know, you take ones. Uh, you know, when you know to step up and when you know to step back. So those are the consciousness that we need to yeah. bring, um, you know, and we, I've learned this completely by working for over 30 years with the indigenous community. Yeah, I think it's a similar uh, similar attitude that I brought when I was trying to revive. Uh, we found this script in the in, in palm leaf manuscripts of the Kaisiki Natakam, this uh, 15th century theater ritual I was speaking about earlier. And uh, I was working with a hereditary artist and they just automatically had a sense of how it needed to be uh, processed, how it needed to be to, to be restaged. So, you know, in terms of the kind of music that was used, the kind of the pace that was needed, the way the fact that there would be that there would be people sitting from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. For instance, just sitting in the temple, they would maybe doze against the pillars, go to sleep, but there was no kind of city kind of slickness that was needed for this. People right. would come and go. And you would need to allow the the piece to breathe, the the whole. So I sort of I had to trust. I had to give up a kind of my sort of urban impatience and my yeah. tendency to want to you know control or produce you know those things. So I just became like an enabler. So I think in a sense, Deepanka, that's what we both share. We both are enablers. You know, we really believe that there are, there are there's ta not just talent, that there's brilliance and there's capability. I particularly focus on the young people because that's what this pandemic, whether it's boxed, whether it's new Nartaki, which is a new um, new kind of uh, platform that I created 30 years after Nartaki, I said, look, there's so much that needs to be said in terms of diversity and inclusion. And we are not getting those voices. We're not getting to hear from people who have asserted identity and they still want to dance. They want to dance different themes. And where is the space for them? You know, so I've been consistently trying to create that voice uh, yeah. in the neo nartaki The digital space has allowed, uh, you know, yeah, it's sort of the slow emergence because there's no critic writing people off and there's no box office. You know, yeah. we don't have that. So in a sense, the pandemic has been very good uh, in, in that sense, Deepankar. So yes. we've been able to get these, these amazing young people, you know, yeah. and this, uh, this, uh, this baby's initiative that I was part of called Kuti, Kuti Kahani, which was uh -huh. kids telling stories for kids and adults. Right. right. Yeah. In one minute and two minutes. So Kuti yeah. Kahani, literally as Kuti and Kahani, small stories. So that, that happened around Children's Day, and I was so happy to be a part of that. Um, and you know, and Andal's garden, you know my fascination with Tamil poetry, especially Andal. You you know how. Uh, the kind of emotional response in, in Madras yeah. when you came and saw the work yeah. and how everybody's either weeping or, you know, that kind of connect. But the idea, when you talk of diversity, I like when I'm casting my dancers, I specifically 
do not want to look for a type. I don't want to look for a certain color skin and a certain body type. I want to cast in diversity. Right. You know, I want different shades of brown. I want different body types. Yeah, they all have to dance, yes. But I'm not obsessed with one generic body type. I think we have to just right. do away with that, you know. And Absolutely. we can't, yeah, and we can't just uh, suddenly decide on Pride Month that, oh, pride is in, diversity is in, you know, identity yeah. assertion is in, and, you know, everybody can say what they want. And July 1st, we just, we sort of forget about it. You know, right. so all this, yeah, so body shaming, you know, I'm trying to fight against, like, all these all these kind of aspects, you know, uh, right. and but it's it's difficult because when you uh, you present the work, like I did not yet next, I did an updated version with more theater and actually darker uh, because her final moments were not very very happy. It was not a ladida happily ever after, but the resp the responses you get from the people, you know that fair girl. She's pretty. Why don't you put her in front? Why don't you put her in front? Yeah. You know that girl, little plump, that little plump girl. Oh, she's very good, huh? Little plump yeah. girl, but she's very good. Right. Okay. Right. It's, so look at look at all the kind of conditioned ways in which even yeah. even my good friends who are rasikas, yeah. you know, this is how they are responding. Yeah. You know. Uh, that yeah. fair, slim, pretty girl, that plump, yeah. dark, darker girl, you know. Yeah. So I'm just sitting and I'm wondering about when are we going to, have, how are we going to shift? But the only way we can do it is by continuing to continuing to walk the talk. We have to continue yeah. to do it. Like I have right. to continue to mentor or commission or, you know, support all these initiatives, the Nartaki or Boxed or we're doing something called Daily Diaries during during uh, you know October, like, what does uh, the goddess mean to you? I mean, who is the woman? It's not just Devi, you know, like uh, Kali. But what does it mean to have a guide? You you spoke about two spirit, right? You talk about you spoke about two spirit, and it's just such a Native American term, you yeah. know that uh, yeah. that they adopt. And there are there is so there are so many beautiful energies available for us to work with so many beautiful energies in india there is so much suppression repression um, you know paranoia prejudice uh, and but we have to work at it yeah. we have to work at it consistently okay. i want i want my work whether i'm on stage or whether the uh, who i collaborate with or even the talks i'm having now you know i'm having to convince um, non-binary people to talk to a heterosexual woman. Because now they, they are, I'm talking of brown people who have come out as queer or uh, gender fluid. And they say, no, politically, they will only talk to another non-binary person. And I'm saying, look, I want to come in with respect and empathy, educate me. If I say something, pull me up. I'm willing to be the guinea pig, you know? I don't want to, listen to an expert telling me what it is. I want to listen to you. I want you to talk to me, yeah. you know, and speak. So that's what I'm trying to do. And it's, yeah. it's, it's been work, Deepankar. It's been a lot of yeah. work no, to get them to work. agree. Yeah. yeah, you know, but I understand, I understand the trauma that they are bringing, you know, you have to understand the trauma because they have always been marginalized. They have always been misrepresented. Uh, you know, uh, so I think we have to create spaces in which they tell their own stories and we need time and space to arrive uh, uh, to provide that. And, and you know, I can understand uh, why initially, you know, they want to just hold on to their identities and I respect that. And at the same time, we have to learn how to be allies, you know. Uh, uh, you know, that's something from the domestic violence work that we do. You know, we have a women's focus program in, in a domestic violence. We have a play that that has taken out of reports or from women, from police. Um, and we have impacted the judicial system, the legislative system, um, the police and, of course, community. And um, we do this and uh, and it has changed policies of the country. And there, you know, uh, the women advocates really transformed my uh, thinking. So I would, so in a conference, we did this play. It, it was called Journey to Safety. It was about domestic violence uh, on bodies, women's bodies, color, women bodies in the US. Um, and so there were only three men. It was a conference of 700 
uh, people in that uh, in the banquet hall. There were only three men: me, who directed the piece, and there was Chuck Terry, who's a very well-known male women's advocate, and the hotel person who would turn the lights off and on. So there were three men in the room, and uh, seven hundred women. And then at the end of it, suddenly Liliana Estanburu was one of the actors, and one of my close friends. She's a women's advocate from Argentina. She said, "You three men, can you please come forward?" <laughs> And like we went there as if we have done some, you know, I failed my math exam and I had to get my sign signature of my mother. I went there. So we went there and she says, why don't you both sit? You have watched us the whole day. We want to see how does it land on you. And so three or three men were just sitting there, you know, and there was this group and a circle called the fishbowl exercise. All these women, they said, just talk. Just talk. You were present, you know. We are here because men don't know how to behave. You know, because of domestic violence. So you now talk. We want to listen to you, and and I said that you know I'm uh, because I respect that this is your space. That's why uh, I'm keeping quiet because the work shows. He says no, that's not an option. He said good men, people uh, who support the women's advocacy against domestic violence. You do not have the privilege to keep quiet. You must speak. Because if you keep quiet, who is speaking? So, uh, so on the one hand, you cannot speak for someone, but at the same time, we have to be sensitive to see how we hold that, right? To be invited in to speak. And I, because I understand why, because when you have been historically traumatized, historically persecuted, and even not just, even now, even now in America, while oh. we talk, you know, the, the, there's, there's this so much against, homophobia, there's huge uh, transgender. Uh, you know, it's and, so and it's not obvious. very, not very uh, privileged over here. Not very open over here. I mean, uh, it's very much uh, present. But the point is, then there is uh, one at a time. One at a time. We just have to build groundswell of support and affirmation. Uh, you know, and, and, I, uh, and yeah, I think hearing the voices, giving them representation, being their allies. Uh, and this is not just for people with, you know, uh, who are non-binary. It is for uh, any of these brilliant communities that uh, that deserve center stage, that deserve yeah. the spotlight. I think uh, it's been so, as you said, appropriated, you know, for yeah. too long with uh, with uh, people speaking for them or for others. Misrepresenting, and, uh, misrepresenting yeah, them. Misrepresenting, that yes. if I, you know, It's not that they are coming out now. They have existed since centuries. Yeah. You know, it is that, you know, but we build this wall of patriarchy based on either race or caste. What it, I think is the build the wall and, of my own. And, and elitism. Know, and, so elitism. Yeah, and, and elitism. And, you know, and privilege. And so uh, that the communities always existed. You know, that's why I always object to word when people say that, you know, we provide space for, uh, you know, silent voices. I said, no voice is silent. You know, any community that has been marginalized have always existed. Yeah. You know, men are not doing anything amazing uh, to say that, you know, oh, we are breaking patriarchy. You damn should break patriarchy because women have always existed. You have not yeah. done anything great to provide space for, space for them. In fact, now you are getting educated to listen to them. And that goes for LGBTQ community and all other voices that are marginalized, yeah, right? Yeah. Because the future only lies in collaboration. Because we have, to, we have to be responsible allies. And if they tell us, if any community tells us, like for example, India is represented only with you know, sometimes the snake charmers and, and Gandhi and Mother Teresa, like everything great about India, but then we don't touch the contemporary politics of what's happening in India, right? So unless we are also aware of the beauty, you know, and the totality of the system, the system will always remain status quo. And we need to shift that. And, well, and you know, I, I appreciate the work that you're yeah. doing with, with youth. And, and, and while we are doing work with youth and while we are doing work with yeah, uh, you know, providing space for younger people. Thank God that we have the privilege to do that now, you know. And at the same time, we should also see that there is no safety network of resources for our elders. You yeah. know, people who have, I know in Calcutta now, I'm connected with so many theater artists, technical people, people who are doing television, like all shooting has stopped. 
and there is no because i i belong to a lot of uh, places where we are trying to raise money from here so you know there is no safety network for our elders and there is no possibility of space for our younger people so who is holding the present reign uh, and then we have people like you and me who have been in the field long enough and by god's grace we are in a position to provide space we have to put these questions in the center we yeah we absolutely have to i you know i just want to end with a it's a funny incident uh, i was invited uh, to middlebury college in vermont a few years ago and with uh, uh, to the department of theater and uh, and women's studies to spend a week as an artist in residence so the pictures that they sent that the, i was invited the pic, did not have me in my traditional indian garb it was a very contemporary picture and uh, the the bursar who had to sort of okay the grant said oh she doesn't look indian to me is she coming to do indian dance so it was it was that the, the, the head of departments of women studies and dance had to argue with the bursar to say you know just because this image doesn't have the sort of bridal look you know right. she, she's she's coming from india prove to me that she's authentically indian i mean this is a wow. real story that happened to me god you know uh, yes. yeah yes. and not not very long ago uh, uh, to middlebury college so i think dipankar we've come to a point where we say what now you know uh, i just shared what i think is now and i i'm not in a hurry to run back on the stage or dance but i'm thinking of what can i create who can i collaborate with you of course are uh, primarily in my mind but who can i collaborate with that will you know push me challenge me and who and how can i uh, help others i i don't want to use the help because it also sounds very patronizing how can i really encourage people in the digital medium because this is what we're, we're going to be in this space at least for another 6 months uh, at least in india yeah and uh, i'm very interested in because there are many indias there's not one india there's right. the india of you know the five star hotels and our you know private airplanes but there's the in india there's the india of the villages that india of the simplicity of a potter and a weaver and you know there's the, the india of the woman waiting for water on a plastic bucket there's an india there's so many indias of a priest going on a two wheeler so what what do i want to engage with is there are questions that i have and i think it's good that i have more questions than answers because i think the the questions are what drive me the questions are, are what push me i don't want easy answers you right. know if, so, if there uh, were answers the problems would not have existed and uh, you know right. the struggle lies like you say in a rehearsal when we are creating work is in the process you know yeah, and yeah. if we already knew the answers uh, there won't be any journey you know yes. and, and uh, so we will arrive and i'm okay i'm i'm learning to be okay with lack of clarity you know exactly. clarity yes yeah, we do yes. not have the privilege to always journey with clarity because then it's not a journey at all it's regurgitating bullshit you know and that bullshit does not has not worked is not working and you know, um, anita be, before i answer th that question can i just show you again is connected with your question um, if i could invite surya ji to show those uh, you know post fire i just want to say again it's a relevant yeah, the work pictures. yeah just want to show you the relevance um, you know george floyd got murdered and the world knows and we stay on lake street our studio uh, yeah, is in your here. city in your city in, my city, in minneapolis in minneapolis uh, you know when george floyd got murdered on may 26 um, you know last year it was a line on the sand for me uh, we can go to the next picture so this is my community this is where uh, my studio is this is where we have created so this is what was left you know white supremacists came from different cities and Uh, they really burnt burnt it down the police precinct was right opposite this building we have created so much work there national directing institute that we host was in these buildings and um and you know and and the uh, and the fire brigade when when these people came and threw molot of cocktails inside our buildings you know um the 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 police the fire brigade consciously did not come because we were protesting against the police uh, brutality so the fire brigade did not come because it is not accompanied by police because here when you call 911 the police comes fire brigade and ambulance the three of them come this was a revolt against the police uh, the police get caught us right opposite this and so the fire brigade did not come and they let our building our communities burn you know uh, and it was important for me to show you this because what are we creating what next 
So we are transforming this. So thank you, Suryadi. So we are transforming this truth, this reality. Now, this, this is not bombastic speeches, you know, and selfie and posting it on social media to get yes. 200 likes. You know, this is the truth. This is the truth. And this truth did not, this truth just surfaced now. It has been going, going on for 300 years in North America. You know, you know, in this supposedly progressive space, uh, you know, uh, which is a melting pot, which is, yeah, all of it goes, the resources go to support only one community and not the rest. And so uh, it was important for me to share this because that's yeah, where we are this, and it's intersectional and it is intergenerational. That's why I wanted to bring in the youth. In this protest that happened, majority of the people, a lot of those people were in their 20s and they were whites, they were blacks, they were Latinx, they were uh, LGBTQIA community, like we all came together. And we said that enough, no more, you know, and hopefully it's not the short window where we go back to, you know, uh, the normal, you know, so for me, you know, what next is with this reality that we have to first heal. You know, we have to first heal. You know, we have to do everything that we can where another, and while we are, while I'm talking to Anita, yeah, two days ago down our street, you know, a car, you might have seen it in Democracy Now! or Al Jazeera or whichever international, you know, a car came and just rammed again, protesters down the street here. So, wow. every, you know, so it is not over. It has never been over and it will never be over. But the point is, just like the way you have created box and the work continues in an imaginative way, you know, powerful bodies who have been never been given centrality, you, we are providing centrality in the work. So voices against injustice, uh, you know, has always, we are standing on the backs of 300 years of slavery, colonization, yes. genocide, you know, yes. so it is not a choice. So many times, like when people are criticizing you that, why is it, you know, this makeup and why are you not smiling on stage? Why, you know, to me, many people from my Indian community, you know, they say, why are you washing our dirty linen in public? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and, and, and why are you talking about all this? The point is that we are documenters of time and this is our responsibility, you know, to document the time in its truth and authenticity, you know? And the next, what is next for me is really not to step back, you know, uh, because, and let it go back to normalcy, you know, to raise your voice if there is any point where fearlessness is demanded of, and accountability is demanded of us artists, we have to do it in our work, the people whom we present, the work we produce, and we cannot, we have to walk our talk, like you said. Yeah. I, you know, in closing, I just want to say, Deepankar, finally, it's really a very lonely journey because the seed of an idea that comes, you want to then build that community of people who will help, help you co-create. You hope that it will communicate. You hope that it will resonate. But the beginning is actually quite lonely. And I have to acknowledge it. For me, it's, it is lonely because as a dancer, ideator, producer, you know, it is me that is bustling with this, then I have to sort of, uh, I'm hoping that it will, some somebody else will like it from my team, that they will take and run with it. I'm hoping that when I create a choreography on the bodies of younger people or even on myself, I'm hoping that what is keeping me engaged is, is hope, you know, will hopefully, um, is that somebody else would, would like it. So mm -hmm. I think that there are, uh, there are, there, I mean, I don't know how many questions there are from the audience, but I know you and I will always have more questions than answers. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Ramanjit, I think uh, we've ended, but may I just uh, end with a piece of uh, music and dance that we've lined up with Anda's Garden, because then I think it'd be a nice segue to go back to uh, some more talk. So, Surya, I want you to play Anda's Garden. It's a uh, the voice of an 8th century Tamil poet, but I purposely chose non-Bharatnatyam dancers who had never encountered Tamil poetry ever before. So you'll see it on the body of a Kathak dancer and a Manipuri dancer. Just two minutes.
Thank you, Ramanjit. Thank you so much. Well, it has been such a journey in such a short time of, uh, you know, the art that both of you engaged in for so many years. And uh, it was lovely to see the thought and the collaboration that you both had. And thank you for sharing those visuals. So you, we kind of covered from a very uh, deeply moving episode of, uh, you know, your father, passing away and how in performing arts, it's all about the ethics, the commitment, the dedication that a performing artist has towards uh, his or her art form. And uh, going to Tagore and how Tagore is, I mean, he manifests freedom of expression. And if we don't understand, then we don't understand him at all. And then moving on to uh, sharing tiny bits of, uh, you know, the box series and uh, Andal's Garden. But Anita, the, I have few questions and I will read few comments from here also. But first, I have few of mine. Uh, could you share a little bit more about your thought behind the Andal's Garden? What made you, I mean, the box series we've all engaged in and we have all, uh, I have personally participated in and I must share with our audiences that it was your phone call that told me that uh, I would like you to perform something for the box series that actually opened a lot of doors for me, you know, when I decided to use this space under the dining table. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I'll be eternally grateful to you for that because this kind of breakthrough mo moment, you know, stays with an artist and defines a lot of work that comes after that. So my daughters, my little one, nine-year-old, and my older one, uh, who's uh, 19, uh, they both shot it from different angles because I had no one else. And she brought in her toys, which uh, Chitra Sutra, uh, Sundaramandi said that it was like Alice in Wonderland that was yes. created below the dining table. Uh, but even in Andal's Garden, if you see, or many other series that you have done, Theatre has talked about site specifics and intimate theatre, studio theatres, but we have really seen dancers um, involving themselves in different spaces. But actually this lockdown helped and uh, curators like you have, um, you know, as you have very rightly put, encouraged uh, the youngsters or even the older dancers to take this risk with the spaces and actually people ended up uh, exploring so many more spaces of the um, landings, the stairs, the doors, the windows, the dining tables, bathrooms, window <laughs> sills. I mean, we've seen it all. So yeah. but do share your thought uh, about Andal's Garden. Tell us a little bit about it, Andal's poetry for the audience who may not know. And yes. Okay. So Andal was uh, one of the early uh, uh, women's voices, late 8th century, uh, 9th century, or so you're talking March before Mirabai or Akka Mahadevi or, you know, Janubai, Sakubai uh, of Maharashtra. So, you know, the, the Bhakti movement that began from the south of India. So she was the lone female voice who sang, uh, who believed herself to be the mystic bride of Krishna. So her poetry is full of, ero uh, full of erotic uh, undertones because she has said like, if any, if any human being touches my body, it will be like a fox sniffing at a sacrifice. You know, that uh, these breasts are for nobody but Krishna. So it, it, I'm talking of uh, late 8th century, early 19th century, uh, um, early ninth. So, but this is this was a Tamil voice of a young girl who lived in a little village, who then, whose poetry was so powerful that over centuries, many powerful rulers and leaders were so taken by it that they made sure that her, her name lived on, even beyond Tamil Nadu to, uh, to Andhra. We were talking about chauvinism. Tamils believe Andal is ours. 
she's mm. ours like nobody can do under what do you mean you want how can you allow a kathak kathak dancer odissi dancer how can they understand but for me just like tagore belongs to everybody andal belongs to everybody i mean if a bharatnatyam dancer can do a meera bhajan meera bhajan is done sung danced it's painted why can't andal also enjoy that kind of pan indian style, you know exposure also the word garden because it is believed that she sat in the garden next to the temple in her village where she wrote and she sang so for me because we were this is the one mandate i told dancers it has to be outdoors it can be outdoors anywhere in your city your town in a ru- against ruins against against a, under a tree so find your find your garden whatever your outdoor space is it has to be tamil you cannot translate those lyrics into assamese or hindi uh, or bengali it has to be tamil it has to be carnatic because for me that was the challenge to give them uh, music and words that they were not familiar with they could have they could have tried to translate it into hindi or have it put in a hindustani tune i said no but we'll give you singers with that open quality but they will remain carnatic but the voice will give you that space in which you can be true to your style mm-hmm. and i said you don't have to do like dance word to word meaning ari mare kanna which means you who whose body is dark as the rain clouds that's it this inspires me to you know perform it as a theater absolutely a because her work is so theatrical so that was my inspiration to reach out to people beyond beyond bharatnatyam for bharatnatyam i i went to the elders i went to senior artists who were already in their late 60s or 70s wherever they lived in the world and i told them to do it like a baithak you know there was an artist in chicago and she said december it's so cold i said sit in the window let me see the snow outside it doesn't matter absolutely no problem just don't do it in your living room with the television and the furniture i don't i it can be a home sit inside where you're warm but let me see the outside let me see snow falling it's fine just give me a glimpse of the outdoors and you can just do it seated you know and so we had a range of styles a range of age yes. and we had a lot of solos and some groups but it was uh, 30 days non stop morning at 6 o'clock evening at 6 o'clock we had 60 premieres wow morning, i didn't know evening, that i was following yeah. it but i didn't know that 60 morning evening interspersed with talks interspersed with the food of our time all the special food that has now come in to be uh, to be part of um, yes, wedding yes we were food. creating those feasts right yes is oh all God. part of the yeah, other world so i created uh, in the digital platform her world not just her poetry so we had dancers uh, uh, in lodi garden for instance going through all the old uh, so i said fine and everything was shot on a, on phone cameras everything was shot on phone cameras because that was the device that people yeah. had people and yeah. i was not interested in having hd camera people coming no i said our smartphones have become smartphones so just do it with that and and we found out surya was uh, uh, our main editor for the series but he will tell you that we received some amazingly pre-edited work from young kids they were shooting these dancers and they just did it on their iphone yeah, or yeah. whatever software or their android so this is what i mean we we i found a whole new world of talent you know where where Uh, a performing artist would never have previously interacted yeah with with these people the um, behind the camera the yes new, the new relationships and the new marriages yes. that are happening yes. yeah yeah so uh, also uh, i would like you to share your thought behind kutti kahani i saw again that there were more than 40 opis- episodes i don't know the exact number what was your thought behind it you know, uh, it yeah. what kind of stood out for you during those 40 episodes i'm sure there must be few moments that kind of stood out for you or even 50, you were taken aback or surprised 55 episodes that was picked up by doordarshan this was a concept of ananda shankar jain the dear friend a dancer colleague from hyderabad see could you see the idea is that we are talking down to children we are telling them stories yeah you know we are reading them stories but 
what if children told their own stories or told their own story though their own version of andal or krishna or meera or radha or ganesh you know and in one and two minutes and you know what we discovered is a lot of them were children of artists mm-hmm. they were the children and the age group was i think 5 to 10 i think 5 to 12 wow yeah and again a fantastic team of editors waiting to edit and the parents sometimes forgetting landscape mode doing it in the vertical asking them to go back they no 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 the child has gone to school child has got exams i can't disturb the kid you know yeah. so kutti kahani was picked up uh, picked up for doordarshan they just played it for 55 days uh, so uh, but congratulations yeah, for that i was about to ask you that did you find funders later on for box for andal's mm-hmm. garden because those are the kind of interventions that we need from the community that we need from corporates the government the cultural sectors tamanjit you know how bad business and the economy has yes, been during that's why i right and <laughs> but, but andal's garden will become an ebook i think and i think definitely we've just we are concluding what we call one year after boxed you've also been on it a year after what have these artists been doing for a year we're catching up with them uh, sharing once again that brilliant 2 minute video and finding out in what directions have they all gone for me it's really important to stay in touch with my artists it's very important to find out what their journeys have been this is also part of uh, what i feel is a the duty of a mentor you don't just pick up somebody give them 2 minutes and then forget about them yeah. you know um and so i think in the, this digital world and uh, deepankar will agree that we've had a explosion of unusual talent the yes. possibilities have been there in fact you will you will be surprised all the established names in dance have not put out as much product as some of the younger and braver ones who have nothing to lose they've done some very creative work the more senior people are little more hesitant what will people think they're still negotiating camera angles they're still negotiating the fact that in the digital world you cannot have as much ahari it doesn't work for the it has to, the simpler you are the better the camera reads you know so i think the uh, senior generation is still negotiating with that the youngsters are just ready they're out of the block you know ready to go Um, But your risk-taking abilities are uh, completely inspirational. <laughs> I've I've always done that, Ramanjit. I've always I've never worried. Is there a safety net? I've just jumped. Okay, you just leap. And uh, but I think after years, the Pankaj will agree. After years, you know your strengths. You know your weaknesses. You know that you have a voice that. we have we have cultivated we worked really hard to cultivate in the community you know pangea world theater doesn't get to be to be called a cultural jewel uh, it took 25 years to be called a cultural jewel you know it took me so many years to just get a national award you know i, I only got it in 2016 the reason being uh-huh. ramanji yeah the reason being that no nobody can figure out what is she trying to, the dance uh, crowd said oh but that's not dance theater crowds uh, can say not really yes. theater but i'm saying all of you figure out whatever you want to figure out i'm doing my work so yeah. this uh, the recognition actually appreciation comes but actual official recognition it takes time you know it takes but and but sometimes it, you know the the people who are a little different and they are not uh, and uh, boxed into uh, conformities then uh, they are the ones who are kind of ignored for a very long time yeah. so because the work is evocat uh, people are not understanding it and then later on it is acknowledged that oh i mean this was a wow factor over there or something really substantial yeah. happened because, there. W- because one year later box was featured in a durban digital conference as a path breaking initiative you know in is, in Durban, south is. africa i think it's They're, one of the most the significant UK, series sorry yeah and in the uk uh, people are going to be you know celebrating box as one of you know the, like a really bold uh, work for 
for Indian dance, for Indian contemporary dance. I didn't set out to be, you know, applauded a, a year later. You can, you, you can understand. Yeah. You just do it. Yeah. But when you do it, you do it with 2000% convic conviction, like what Dipanka said, you go out there, you attack the stage, but you attack the project with the same kind of intensity and, uh, you know, authenticity and the intentionality, you know, you just go out there believing that this is going to work. But I have to say also, Ramanjit, my years of working in television in the US has honed my communication skills. Right. You know, how, how I look at the camera, how I speak, how I connect with an audience, that comes to me naturally. Mm. Yeah, to speak, ex and I think these are skills that ha I've put to good use. It's not like I did something in America, put it aside and came back to being the dancer I was before I left. Right. I refused to do that. I refused to. So how many anything. years were you there in America? 15 years. Oh, okay. 15 years. I spent uh, two years in graduate school doing theater and uh, theater and television. And uh, oh, you did theater in your graduation. I have a master's degree in theater. Oh, which I don't. Yes. I don't have one. I, have a master's degree <laughs> I just studied theater. under masters. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to be trained under masters, but so I didn't have I, a so, degree. So, so in theater, you work the you work in the set department, you work in the costume department, you work in the script department, you work in the rehearsal department. You're working everywhere, and uh, yeah, fifteen years in the U.S. And so you 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 get to understand who you are in that society. Remember, this was between nineteen seventy six and nineteen ninety you know, one, 1992. So America was going through a huge change at that point. The 1980s was like, you know, New York was filled with crime. I mean, it was just such a dangerous, violent city. The punker will know now it's become some Disney, Disney world. But, you know, and so plastic. But uh, between, and I came back in 1991, 92. So it was an amazing 10 solid years of weekly television weekly television right. interviewing you know directing hosting editing i mean you can't get a better field yes. of experience yes. and in a city like new york so how do you use all that arsenal you, you you can't box me as a dancer you have to you have to think of me as an actor a presenter a communicator you know a performer a performer and and i will use and Dipankar will say, next time you work with Dipankar will say, use every arrow in your arsenal. Use everything in your arsenal, Absolutely. you know, if, if it's going to be powerful. So that's, you know, that, that's, what, uh, that's what I think is, um, is really very important, very important moving so ahead. The moments, the moments of your collaboration, Dipankar, are definitely going to stay with us. The visuals were fascinating and that uh, yeah. meeting bed is definitely going to stay with me it was i who asked that uh, what what is the floor flooring that you did and then you said that it was just the lighting because i could see that there is a flooring but it doesn't move uh, unlike pina bausch's uh, carnations or yes. you know where the flooring has been or um, uh, there was another where she uses sand all over or many directors have used sand so but it was just lighting and that was uh, that created a very surreal atmosphere so especially that light had its own movement and then the bed moving on top of that and then these two lovers uh, it was uh, those moments are going to stay with us so thank you for sharing those with us also uh, the work that you did with the elders in the park you know the elderly actors and the um, a few thoughts that you leave with us uh, is uh, you must know how to enter a community and how to exit. So uh, this has been a very enriching uh, talk, but there are a couple of questions. If you both are not very tired, I would okay. definitely like to uh, take them. And uh, one is it would be great if you could share with us the idea of space as a narrative and body as a narrative in a combined space. Was it challenging? Dipankar? Anita, you're welcome to take it. Uh, well, uh, uh, Space. Um, yeah, Dipankar needs his coffee right now. No, 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 I'm fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. no, I'm, the politics of space really is uh, the first primacy 
um, that I have, you know, how, what you, how you use the space is extremely important to me. And I think the politics of the body, because we, uh, the moment, even there are, uh, uh, even, the, there, even if, a, if a performer comes on, on stage and we like, depending on where is the angle of light hitting, if we backlight or front light, if you put a, uh, you know, a, a flow light, shin, la, shin buster, where the shadow becomes so huge. So, you know, there is no need, uh, the, even before a gestural uh, vocab narrative is introduced, there is a narrative. It's always there is always a design, right? Even before a, one word is spoken, one mudra is done. Even before a person walks. So if a woman comes and just stands in a space, the way I light it, the way I'm lighting my lighting designer will light it. You know, even before a dance happens, even before a word happens, you know, there's narrative, right? And and then uh, with that space, that body intersects and is talking to the space. So there are two protagonists that are engaged. One is the space and one is the body. One is perpendicular and one is horizontal. And then to that, we add lighting, we add sound, we add music. And so all these are, it's like a dance. So to me, the, the, this, to me that is the most exciting um, uh, part. And, and the thing is that, you know, it's very interesting, the space. So for me, I come from street theater in India. So for me, like I never had the privilege to rehearse in close quarters. All that has happened only here, you know, that I have my own studio, I have my own space, <laughs> you know, but in India rehearsal was like the street. Uh, well, we need to street. visit each other's studios. Yeah, we yeah, have many, to. We have uh, the, Minneapolis is there, right yeah. There. Minneapolis so is a beautiful so, you know, so like over here, uh, my equity does not allow me I did not know that till I made the mistake. I mean, talking about the politics of space. So some, I was I was somewhere in a party and two teachers came and said, you know, it'll be so great uh, if my students can see you rehearse. I said, just come. You know, I thought I'm in India, right? I said, just let's come. I'll tell the stage manager. I mean, if there's an intimate scene or something going on, which is not appropriate for high schoolers, I will. they will tell you no, but please come. So I'd invited and we were surrounded by 50 high school kids and they were just wrapped. They were just watching. They'd never been invited into a real professional room. But later on, I was, I realized that then I was written uh, up and I was invited, I was asked to meet the production manager because what I did was illegal. Uh, you, you see, because if something had happened to any of the kids, the, the production company would be liable. So right. this litigious society, uh, you know, and I had to take permission because it becomes a performance. So then these equity actors needed to be paying more. Uh, I mean, crap. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, so, so I'm saying the politics of space is very important. It's, it's like who does the work, who can afford to do the work at theaters because here, till we have our own space, which we are trying to get, you know, is more than 3,000 to 3,000 to $4,000 to rent one week um, space, you know. So space has uh, economic politics, uh, you know, the physical politics. And so it's, it's a very, very important part in my thinking of space and how does an actor intersect with the space. I completely agree over there, and especially when you're a physical performer or your body is the main canvas that you use. Um, uh, then, you know, for example, site specific or so many experiments or interventions that uh, Anita the showed or we talked about her latest curations. Uh, when you engage with different spaces, how the politics of uh, or the marriage or coming together of the body and the space changes the narrative, you know, and how Absolutely. you explore new stories within that uh, uh, new relationship that's happening in that moment. Uh, there's it's, another- It's pivotal, it's vital, you know, it, it's, uh, I mean, the space, uh, 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 but sometimes, uh, I'm not saying all dancers, but some dancers, you know, uh, because, you know, th th sometimes I've worked with some dancers and even actors who would love to come to the center of the state, right. of, the, of the physical stage. The whole dance comes in this, but m what if there is no light? What if the light is on downstage right or downstage left or up center? So the physical centrality is really not the center of the stage. So, you know, center is where the body is. And if there is no light there, so you don't, I, I tried to, it was, I was talking, working with a very well-known 
uh, you know, actor in the film world. And so somehow this tendency to always walk to the center and give the speeches. So I asked him, I said, why is that beach make you jati up yana se kare okay bath ki jiye? Because this is an important dialogue here, beach mein jana hai. So I said, if beach mein light na ho, to aap andhere mein kare okay by monologue. If there's no light in the center. So it was, it was a moment of tension. So this, you know, in the minds of uh, people have, they think in the center of the physical space is the important space. But that's not so, you know, true. people people who are working with that idea, even in choreographers I've seen, there's always a, a, a sort of a choreographic center and 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 they work around it. So, so even if they're saying that they don't think of space, they are thinking of space. We all mm -hmm. think of space. Anita, you, you are a, you're a choreographer. Me, you, yeah, Anita, no, I, I, no, I think I should take the next question because it's really like getting late. Right. <laughs> Let, yes. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll just uh, add over here. I this is this reminds me of what Mahesh Datani said in one of his recent sessions that I tell the actors to take away all the words from my play and then perform. And if nothing is left, I knew that there was never anything there. You know, there was nothing in the beginning. So what we are trying to say that if the conditions or the situations or the place uh, which the performer thinks is important is taken away from the performer. What happens then? Is there anything left? And I think that's where you find the truth of the moment. Uh, oh. Then uh, let's just go to the next one. It feels like racism and exoticism are extremes of the same parallel, or I would say two ends. What is the balance then? How would you define the balanced while scripting or constructing a performance? Why would you want to have uh, even an iota of racism or exoticism? Why would you, I mean, you would have to banish them both, you know? And you have to be really conscious when, you, when you're crafting something, you know? Especially now, because uh, the, so many voices have become amplified during the pandemic. And there's been so, the decibel level of uh, violent speech, Twitter's flooded with hate rhetoric, you know, and everybody's pointing fingers and accusing somebody else of wrongdoing. So if you're scripting or crafting something, you don't want to be racist. You certainly don't want to be racist. At least you don't set out, you don't set out to be, oh, now this is, how am I going to balance racism, racism and exoticism? My God, they're both like anathema. I wouldn't want to deal with both. I will want to deal with what is the context of what I want to do. If it ends up looking exotic to some, not exotic to something, somebody racist to some, not, it's going to be in the eye of that person. Picasso said, you, you see today with, eye, with the eye of yesterday. You never see with fresh eyes, right? Why? Because you already come with some kind of prejudice, some kind of history, some kind of cultural memory, into that, into a space, into that, into that living entity we call theater or performance. Hopefully, neither Deepankar and I would ever even think about the idea of racism. We, we would want to work against those, you know, to work against that. So uh, I don't know about even wanting to balance it. You know, things evolve as you, as you develop a script, as you develop a choreography, you develop a dance. And that's because that's why you have the live art. You stop and check. And then you said, no, okay, this doesn't seem right. You know, this, so let's change it. So you, you have, if, as long as you have those filters and those checks, and if you, and if you don't have it, you need to have another trusted person, like a third eye looking at the work, maybe. Right. So, uh, maybe, maybe what, uh, I mean, if, if uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with what, with what you said, Anita. I mean, uh, may, may, maybe I'm just thinking that, uh, are we trying to say that uh, aesthetic, the aesthetic of beauty, the aesthetic, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I think if that's the goal of the question, then, then there is an aesthetic to, uh, to authenticity, the aesthetic of fearlessness and the aesthetic of authenticity is the beauty of it. And, you know, because these words, um, uh, racism and exoticism, you know, I'm sure a woman has not crafted that. 
and uh, uh, these are words that have been in the parlance of um, you know male uh, male gaze um, and power gaze and those type of words need to be uh, really uh, uh, i mean i'm being politically correct and saying examine but actually what i really want to say is banish the hell out of our vocabulary <laughs> but <laughs> but i think that maybe the question is how do we arrive at the aesthetic and beauty you know when we are talking about harsh um, you know politics that does not mean we get up in the morning and drink acid you know we get up in the morning to live life to see the beauty of nature and yet be authentic in while we negotiate uh, uh, the, our truths and maybe maybe i think that's what the conversation question maybe really is trying to ask um, right yeah maybe. so few yeah. compliments i would love to read thank you to the whole audience but neeta raman says that i find the act so absurd the land act so absurd too little land too back. late land the land, land the land back the dipankar The, the land, land acknowledgement. No, I know. Yes. I know Nita Raman, and and I can understand the context. But uh, yeah, I completely agree. See, who is the examiner of personal integrity? You know, the white world. There is. There has to be a history, right? Just saying that we we gratefully acknowledge the Dakota land on which we are in, and continue to do it only Shakespeare with only white actors. And in the history of your production, you have never ever you do not have authentic relationality with the native community. Then that conversation is vacuous. I completely agree. So so the thing is that we have to have a historicity of relationality and depth. And how have you walked your talk? that proves it you know empty empty words lack integrity you know and it is just empty i agree with that but but relationality depends on the depth of the ocean and and if we also some of us who have got that depth of relationality we need to stand as allies because i will be invited in many more communities than any of the native community will like native community will ever will be invited you see mm. so it's my responsibility and accountability to bring to the surface who's missing you know so yes. i think that, i think that's where it lies and vacuous emptiness yes is absolutely does not do anything and all countries whether it's canada us i mean all countries where now the land acknowledgement is becoming a big deal uh, you know uh, it, it, nobody believes them nobody trust them because there has been no resources that has if you really believe in native uh, cultures thriving then put some resources in, in, when you are curating a year of six plays can you say 50% belongs to the people whose land on which we are in you know so you have to be held accountable and so and anita i'm glad that you are checking in on this arts yes life. yes i am much live there's so many comments my god yes. I'll so read four or five. Sandeep Majumdar says, "Simple yet elegant set design and eloquent representation of situation, especially using the body movements in Dipanka Das' uh, drama, always fascinates me." That's over there. Then we have Bina Unnikrishnan, the National President of Arts Leadership Council, Women Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. She was also here. She said, "I really feel theatre is one of the strongest." form of communication beyond any art mm, then uh, of course uh, i had written some uh, vinita says that we can sit for hours listening to such anecdotes and they are still there i can see them thank you vinita and all the audience members pragya bhavna a lot of them have been there and the visuals are so poetic manjeet kaur i think she lives in ludhiana says a fantastic initiative need of the hour um then uh, bhai baldeep singh the music maestro and conservator he says what a fascinating and courageous an idea to bring naturam gotse to life so that uh, yes that uh, idea kind of really uh, stood out and uh, yeah i am pragya gupta goyal gupta writes moving bed stick movements and the set design just outstanding um <laughs> i think yes so these are few of the it was really sensual the whole thing and uh, these are the few things that uh, 
Ah, I have a question which I wrote so that I don't forget. It is, can't believe your daughter picked the koala beer in 96. How is it so fresh and white after more than 25 years? That's my question. The last well, question for the uh, well, episode. Kelly Kong gets her shampoo and her, and her blow dry ever okay. so often. Yes, yes, yes. And she's as fresh. And the fur doesn't go. The fur doesn't no. get spoiled. Okay. No, I, uh, I think the Pankar. new after twenty-five in, years. Twenty-five years, the Pankar. <laughs> so this yeah. one is carrying all the history in it. We must yes. use it in a play or a yes, dance. Why not? why not? Why not? Yes. <laughs> so. Lovely. Well, that was wonderful, Anita. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, Dipankar, for joining us early morning. And uh, I think this was, again, another very enriching session. We touched upon a lot of issues uh, of racism and uh, community and, of course, arts and the artists. Um, to my audiences, I would say that on 26th uh, June, we are having an episode with Chandra Dasanji, who is the founder director of Lok Dharma Theatre in Kochi, Kerala, and uh, Lisa T. Renault, who's joining us from California, USA. She is a theatre critic, trainer, uh, and a performer. So please do join us that day also and participate in the discussion as we map the journeys of the art, the artists, and the times. Thank you so much for being here with Thank us. You. This Thank evening. you. Thank you. Thank Take you. care of yourselves. Times are still not perfect. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep smiling. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Ramanji. Thank you.